I'm half tempted to make you all wait for five minutes to sit here. Sit here doing nothing, but no. No, we're going to start soon, because it's going to be an exciting, a very exciting start to the stream. I've got something that I'm just super excited to share with you. You guys ready? Okay. First of all, ladies and gents, good evening. How's everyone? It's Sunday. It's been warm over here in the UK. It's been remarkably warm. We've had storms, we've had sun, we've had rain. But let me start this stream off in just the most explosive way, the most interesting way, okay? This is AstroTurf. All right, it's fake grass. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. There is no way the stream can get better than this. I agree, all right? We're starting at the top. It's all downhill from here. Listen, if you contact AstroTurf companies, they will just send you samples. Like, this is not enough to AstroTurf a garden, unless you have a very small garden. This is just enough to get a feel for what the AstroTurf kind of is. So I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to build some kind of Warhammer jungle scenery. And slowly, slowly but surely, if I use enough friends, and if I contact enough AstroTurf companies, can I collect enough samples in order to build a kind of Warhammer jungle? I think I probably can. But more importantly, every time someone says to me, go and touch grass, I'm going to have an AstroTurf sample with me. It's going to sit on that desk right there. Next time someone says it, immediately, straight away there. I'm going to rest my arm on it. That's what I'm going to do. That is actually quite pleasant. That is my new mouse armrest, a little square of AstroTurf. If you are in the stream right now, you know about the lore. The lore has been expanded. You know about the banana story. You know about the lore. You know about the do you want to moist. Oh, the universe expands. The lore just gets much, much more full as we get there. And if you're watching this on the Clip channel afterwards, first of all, hi, how you doing? Hope you're having a good day. Secondly, now you know about the, the AstroTurf lore as well. Finally got a sponsorship from a fake grass company. Oh, can you imagine? I would take it immediately. I wouldn't even read the email. They'd be like, uh, hey, we love your stuff. I'm like, done. Immediately. Send me all the free samples you possibly can. We're about to AstroTurf this stream. That's what's going to happen. But no, ladies and gents, the 101 based. Oh, the lore meister. There's a lot of funny stuff has happened on these streams, hasn't it? So if you're here for the first time, allow me to explain what happens. Um, I normally stream quite high energy, talking a lot, reacting a lot. That's effort, so instead I'm going to outsource most of the effort to you guys. We're going to play RuneScape, but I'm going to play what I'm calling Lazy Man Mode. The next quest is The Lost Tribe. And The Lost Tribe requires me to... what does it need? Uh, items required. Light source. Okay, so we don't use uh, candles. We probably want... Alright, so we'll take a tinderbox, need a light source, some fast travel stuff, need a pickaxe. That's pretty much it. And this starts in... Where do we start the... Talk to Sigmund in Lumbridge Castle. Right, I guess we're teleporting to Lumbridge then. I uh, I have no Lumbridge teleports on me. I do have some Lumbridge... You know, I have one. I've got home teleport. I will cast home teleport. I will meet you guys in Lumbridge and we will play some lazy man old school runescape. But I've got some... I've got some hot takes for this stream. I've got a hot take about kick... You know, the other streaming website? Oh, it's well, it's not really a hot take. It's more like a lukewarm take. It's more like a... It's more, it's a microwaved take, but you haven't stirred it. So the middle is still quite cold. It's ice, if anything, if you're... But the outside, boiling. When you mix it all together and you consider you know, everything, it's probably a warm take. It's like a low-energy take. I'm not going to say hot take. I don't want to excite you too much. I don't want to set the bar too high. But I have got thoughts and I have got opinions... And because I'm a, an internet persona, you have to listen to them. That's how it works. That's the law. You can't say no. Not allowed to. It's just banned. But yeah, I, I'm excited to tell you about that. I'm not going to say it right now, because if I say it right now, you'll get my opinion, you'll, you'll disagree, and you'll leave. Arx, oh, thank you very much for the subs. It's remarkably kind of you. But no, of course, Twitch... Oh, the world's, by the way, I am on world... Do, 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 342. Well, 342, I've also uh, started a chat, so if you want to start enjoying the Lazy Strife chat in Old School RuneScape, you can do. I might not be in there often, but it's there. I've never played RuneScape, what's it about? I'm serious. So it's a medieval children's click simulator from about 20 years ago that has uh, just managed to survive. 
pretty much. That's what it is. Yeah, prepare yourself to be whelmed with this kick take. Not overwhelmed, that's too much. Not underwhelmed, that's not enough. When you come to this stream, you will be whelmed. Don't overestimate me, don't underestimate me. Just estimate me, that's what you should do. First of all, Myth, thank you very much for trading me all the stuff I'm going to need for this quest. I can't light the lantern, I need 49 fire making. My fire making is one. Can't do it, mate. It's not a skill I've got. I'm going to need you to give me a candle. Could, we've done this before. Darcy, Darcy knows. I'm going to need a basic candle or a torch. I think you can trade me a torch. All right, so are we going to play RuneScape? Do you need to get on the high scores already? No, no, it's okay. We've got uh, the Lazy Strife chat going on in case you want to be there. You can't look up the stats. Uh, just assume that it's one. Are you guys promise nothing, deliver something. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, did I also get 100 million from Kick? No, they only offered me 90 million, and I'm not about that life, all right? They came over, they're like, Mr. Hayes, Mr. Strife Hayes, sir, do you want to go and stream on Kick? And I went, uh, how much money are you going to give me? And they went, well, only offer you 90 million. An old school bond, that is actually a very useful trade, so thank you very much, that's genuinely useful. No, allow me to explain. What it is. First of all, thank you very, very much for the bond. That is genuinely an extremely useful thing. Cryptic, you are going to be added as a friend for that. You have no choice. You're being added. Uh, no, they haven't. Uh, they obviously haven't come to me at all and offered anything yet because I'm not big or important enough for them. But allow me, you know, we'll do the quest first, then I'll get to my kick hot take. What that item does, by the way, is give me membership. I am going to deposit it into a bond pouch for a second. I'm going to simply uh, deposit that and stick it into the bond pouch. So now there are two, just in case. So when I run out of membership, I can just redeem one of the bonds. Boom, we'll be okay. Right, Myth, thank you for trading me and getting me a light source. This question is, this quest is going to be a lot easier when uh, there are effectively no things for me to do. Use Tinderbox on unlit torch. We now have a lit torch Fantastic. Uh, Darcy, I will follow you. Darcy, could you please lead me to wherever this quest starts? I believe it starts with Sigmund. If it's too hot, I'm suing. Okay, fine. You know what? We'll start off with the hot take. Twitch? Not, not Twitch. Good start, Josh. The other one, Kick. Kick is owned when you go up the chain of corporations, I believe, by stake. Correct me if I'm wrong in any of these points. And stake make a lot of their money from gambling. Now, gambling in some countries it's legal, in some it's illegal, in some online uh, circles it's encouraged, in some it's discouraged. But I think we can all agree that uncontrolled gambling definitely has a, a negative effect on people's who, whose lives it tends to, you know, sink its filthy addictive claws into. And, and, and ruin people. You know, people take out loans they can't afford. People sell things they've kept in their family for generations. People lose a lot of themselves, mentally and physically, if they have a gambling addiction. That is pretty much undeniable. I think we'd all agree that's a, that's, that's a dangerous thing to get into. So the fact that stake exists is on at least some level profiteering off human addiction. We can agree with that. I mean, I'm not one to talk. I'm playing old school RuneScape. We're all addicted to this. But on some level, stake is without a doubt profiteering off human addiction. And so what stake want, and with kick being so closely related to stake and uh, working effectively through them, what they really want is a demographic or an audience who are more prone to want to gamble. They effectively want to attract people to their site and encourage these people to get involved in in gambling, because that's pretty much where they're going to make a lot of their money from. I'm just reading the, the chat right now. So you can say the same about Amazon, absolutely. But what, where I'm going with this is the, the average gambler, if you will, the person whom is more predisposed to gambling, statistically, would normally be male. They'd normally be old enough to gamble, but not necessarily old enough to have full control or you know, of their finances. So you're talking maybe 18 to 25, that kind of thing. And you tend to find that the, the person who's more predisposed to you know, becoming a gambler, if you will, tends to be, and this is not me having any personal opinions, this is just going off, you know, researched facts and demographics, normally more misogynistic, normally more abusive, normally more aggressive. I'm not saying that everyone that enjoys gambling is a negative, terrible person. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that statistically there are 
um, what's the word, flags, if you will, that you could look at someone and go, mathematically, that person is likely to enjoy a good gamble. And someone said to me, uh, as another content creator, actually, they said to me that Kick doesn't seem to be fostering a safe community. It doesn't seem to care about the safe, because people are doing things on Kick and then getting banned for a day, whereas on any other streaming website, they'd be banned for a lot longer. They'd be doing something that uh, is, is, is worse, and they're, they're getting away with it, if you will. And someone said to me, they're not creating a community that fosters safety. And I kind of thought, business-wise, why would they? Now, this is just my opinion, and this might even be my, my conspiracy theory. I don't think Kick wants to foster a sense of safety, because I think if instead they focus on a sense of offense, on a sense of anti-snowflake, on a sense of, you know, almost encouraging this more aggressive stance, this more aggressive behavior, they're actually appealing to the exact demographic that is much more likely statistically, kind of correlation-wise, to be become a gambler. They don't want Kick to be a safe space for everyone. They don't want people to feel that it's absolutely 100% fully inclusive because you would make a lot more money by appealing to people who are going to gamble and you can do that by effectively ostracizing the people that want it to be safe, the people that want to feel included. It would make a lot of sense if Kick kept itself as a more harsh, offensive, dangerous, if you will, online experience, because that's the exact target demographic and target market that they are going for. I think that's an interesting one. Someone said, did stream die? Don't think so. Seems fine for me. I honestly think that um, a lot of the... Because this is one thing that people aren't talking about. And I was talking to Mr. Greggles about this, a good friend of mine. And everyone was saying, oh, Kick is doing a better split for the streamer. Kick is giving more money to the streamer, more money to this, more money to that. Let's just stop. Let's forget the streamer for a second. Let's talk about the audience. Where do you feel comfortable? Where do you want to be? Some people feel much more comfortable in a Kick audience because they... They value the fact they can be a bit more edgy. They can be a bit more offensive. They can be a bit more abusive. They can, they can do stuff and get away with it quicker, if you will. Now, I think the, the safest, if you will, online spread is probably YouTube because it's off and videos and not live streaming and then Twitch after that. But everyone is talking about what's best for the streamer. What's best for you? As an audience member, where do you want to be? Because, yes, Kick obviously has an infrastructure behind it to facilitate lots of streaming, but Twitch has had that for a long time. Now, I'm not saying that Twitch is, is blameless in all this or is in any way perfect. There are, of course, a lot of issues. We saw that with, um, I think it was RT Daniel asked, uh, hey, the, to the CEO of Twitch, you know, why why a 50-50 split? Why so difficult to, to hit the calling of cap? And he went, oh, the, Twitch's culture is different to YouTube. It's different to Kick and when asked to expand on what exactly was different about the culture, he didn't. I uh, couldn't really explain that. So where do you feel comfortable? Uh, or does it matter to you at all? Some people will watch this and think, you know what, I really don't care what site I'm on. All I care about is the content. Some people do care about the politics or the, uh, the behind-the-scenes elements of the site that they're on. But where do you go and where would you feel more comfortable? Knowing the nature of kick and where the money comes from gives me a bad taste. Okay, that's a way that some people would look at it. Twitch is culture different. Some people don't care. Some people prefer YouTube. I only follow people on Twitch these days. I'd stay on Twitch. Yeah, that's that's a big element of the, the kick discussion that is not being looked at. Twitch wants to set itself up as a safe space inclusive for everyone. Kick would actually, if it tried to compete with Twitch in that way of saying everyone is welcome, it would be putting itself almost on an even playing field. The edge that Kick has is actually leaning into the fact that it is a bit more dangerous. It is a bit more abusive. It is a little bit more offensive, if you will, because that's who they're going for. That's, that's the selling point to a lot of the people that are going over there. Yeah. Yeah. I feel uh, most comfortable in Discord. Yeah, that's fair. YouTube is good as well. But that's that's my general PSC. I, To me, I do Twitch for fun. 
It's not because I necessarily agree with all the politics behind it, it's because I like being able to chat to you guys in a live stream. That's pretty much it. Someone says, I like to troll, I get banned here a lot. Um, I would say that trolls get banned on kick less, because that just seems to be something that we've seen. And I would say that kick is definitely more lenient with behavior that on other streaming sites would probably be punished and penalized a little bit harsher. Right, so we are talking to Sigmund, I believe, about Quest. What was I doing again, Sigmund? Talk to people around Lumbridge if any of them know what happened in the cellar. Okay, talk to the cook, Hans, Father Eric, and Bob. Right, Darcy, I will follow you. Please lead me to those people. He missed my message. Rip. Grumpy, I'm here. Grumpy, I'm going to scroll back and find it. Don't you dare think that I'm going to ignore you. Hang on, Grumpy. We're going to scroll back. There we go. I see it. First time I caught your stream, love you, Vidal Guild Wars 1. Excellent game. Lovely watching you gush about a game you love. Very much did enjoy it. Someone has played Guild Wars 1. Assuming you still play it, do you have a group that plays by any chance? See, here's the problem, Grumpy. I get people every single day say, Hey Josh, are you still playing Guild Wars 1? Are you still playing Animist? Are you still playing Warframe? Are you still playing Lord of the Rings Online? Are you still playing Dungeons and Dragons Online? Are you still playing this? Are you still playing that? I physically do not have time in the day to play any of these games, and even if I did, I would be terrible at all of them because I would be dedicating about one hour a week to playing the game, which means I wouldn't make anywhere near as much progress as I need to to be valuable in, in pretty much any way to a group. People say, are you still playing RuneScape 3? Are you still playing Final Fantasy 14? Are you still playing Guild Wars 2? Are you still playing The Elder Scrolls Online? The, the issue is that I've got so many people who want me to play so many of the games that I've played for for the videos, I, I just do not have time, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it's a real shame. It, it is a real shame. What are your thoughts on Throne and Liberty? I have not looked into it enough yet to have uh, any anything near a valuable opinion on that. I've got no idea. Long as you play what you want, I do play what I want. One person got all eight pages. Good. I'm glad about that. That Animus thing was really strange. That was really weird. The fact that... You know that the, the five-year cap for Animus, the player base, was... Myth, I'm following you, by the way. The five-year... Can we go to Bob, please? Bob's axes. The five-year cap was 14 people. After that video that I put out, the five-year cap is now 69 people, which I think is nice. So yeah, we've legitimately got 69 people online at the same time playing it, which I think was great. Come on, Bob. Talk to me about the castle. Uh, okay, Darcy, I am following you this time. We need to go to Father Eric, please. Father Eric would be a good one. The game reminds me of that. I was about to ask the chat about Animist. It's very strange. And I'm almost proud that we were able to do it, but I just, I pointed people in the right direction and everyone chose to go and do it, which I think was great. What is my top five movies of all time? Thank you. Finally. Okay, top five films of all time. That we can do. Now, I've said to before that Sunday is a much slower, more chilled one. Darcy, could you please walk me back to Duke Horatio in Lumbridge? I've said that Sunday is a much slower paced stream than normal. And that's what it's going to be. So that hot take on kick, I might recycle that later if we've been streaming for four or five hours, if the audience has cycled through and I need to fill some time. But until then, let's just ask about basic stuff like, you know, my perfect Sunday, that kind of things. Let's talk about the five favorite films of all time. Now, I like films like a lot. So are we going to just do five films in general, or are we going to break it down into genre? Like five horror films, five action films, five comedy films, that kind of stuff. Or just like five best films of all time ever. Okay, can we can we lump Lord of the Rings, all three, as just one giant film? Would that be okay? Otherwise, they're going to take up three slots in the five list. Because I don't think anyone wants to see Two Towers, Return of the King, and Fellowship as like three of the of the ones. So let, let's lump that together, okay? We'll go with uh, we'll go with that. Uh, I need light source and a pickaxe. Could someone get me a pickaxe, please? So yes, Lord of the Rings, without a doubt, absolutely. If I can sit down with someone and watch Lord of the Rings, we will do. Apart from that, right? What do we? If it's let's choose like one action film, one comedy, one one that kind of things. Comedy films, films that have made me laugh. I mean, Airplane is very funny. That is, you've got to admit, Airplane, without a doubt, absolutely excellent film. Not watched it in a long time, but it still makes me laugh. Probably Monty Python and the Holy Grail. That would be a good one. Hot Fuzz is another funny one. These aren't going on the list, but I think Holy Grail could definitely be there. I think I prefer Holy Grail over The Life of Brian, 
Uh, both excellent films, but Holy Grail to me just tickles me because I very much love medieval fantasy. So we'll do, yeah, we'll do Holy Grail. We'll do all three Lord of the Rings films as one big film. We'll do Holy Grail. What about horror films? Because do I approach this as like really pretentious actor, film student? Do I do I sit down and go like, oh, well, actually, the greatest horror film ever made is Mad God. Because through through no dialogue whatsoever, it conveys a sense of unease and dystopian horror. And yeah, for anyone in the, this, there's going to be like four people in the chat who've actually watched all of Mad God. It's a film called Mad God. It's insanely good. It's weird, but it's insanely good. Skinnamarink. Yes, that's another really weird one. Yeah, Mad God was. I feel I felt weird after watching it. But then you've also got things like um, Everything Everywhere All at Once which was a beautiful film. Is Everything Everywhere All at Once a, a good film? Yes, it is. Is it top five films of all time? Uh, Myth, thank you for trading me. Uh, Sissy, could you please walk me to the basement of the castle? I'm not close enough to the steps. Yeah, Mad God makes you to feel weird to be alive, without a doubt. What's my favourite film which is so bad it's actually good? Well, everyone all automatically straight away goes to The Room for the, the so bad it's good film. But... You know what? I have a real love for the Dead or Alive film or things like the Street Fighter film. Darcy, I'll follow you instead. The Street Fighter film, the Dead or Alive film. The You know, how about the original Power Rangers with Ivan Ooze? Remember that one? Remember that one? Without a doubt. Let's, let's go with the original Power Rangers with the Ivan Ooze bad guy. That can be the so bad it's good film. And if you haven't seen it, allow me to... If you have seen it, do you remember the lyrics to the fight song? Action boy now, action girl now. Repeated for like five minutes while they fight in a construction site. Hell yeah. That was just, oh, beautiful. Myth, I'm following you. Could you please walk me over to the wall? Fantastic. Hell yeah. You guys definitely, if you haven't seen it, Google it. Just Google it. It's, uh... It's a very interesting... I'm going to use, use pickaxe with rubble. My, my torch is already lit, so that's fine. You dig a narrow, tu narrow tunnel through the rocks, squeeze through the rocks. The original Power Rangers where he mind controls all the parents and makes them walk off a cliff while the kids watch. When you say it like that, it sounds bad. When you're watching it in the film, you're like, oh, this is so jovial. What a jape. What a lark we're all having. Oh, what fantastic. What a fantastic, lovely time. What a child-friendly film. But then you watch it back and you're like, this is fucking dark, man. <laughs> People are about to die. Yeah, very much. Favourite war film, anti-war film included. I'm not a massive kind of war film guy, but let me think. Are we talking like any war film? World War One, World War Two? Because uh, Enemy at the Gates was pretty good. That was cool. Uh, obviously everyone goes for like the big ones like Pearl Harbor and stuff. Zulu, of course, you have to like because of Michael Caine. Interesting fact on Michael Caine. So, Michael Caine was cast in Zulu. Um, I am... Oh, you guys, don't follow in here unless you have a light source. Darcy, I'm following you. Uh, I think we need to pick up the brooch on the floor. That's the next thing. I'll grab that. Thank you very much. And now we need to show the brooch to Duke Horatio. So, Matta, I'll follow you. Could you please walk me back to Duke Horatio? I'm trusting you not to run me into the cave. That'd be great. Uh, but no, so what happened with Zulu was Michael Caine got cast in Zulu and his part was actually relatively small when he was cast and he he researched the part in the military that he had been cast as and he went to the director and went, I don't know if you know this, but the, the character you've given me actually does a lot more than you've given me in the script. I should be responsible for this and this and this and this and this. And the director went, oh, yep, cool, got to keep the film accurate. We will absolutely increase... You know, the amount of lines you've got and the involvement you have in this film. Genius. Worked worked his ass off in order to get more lines in a film. That's a perfect Michael Caine thing to do. But no, what would what's the best kind of war film? I'm not a big war film guy, to be honest. It's not really a massive interest that I have. I'm an hour in, but I love watching The Sky. I haven't seen that one. Iron Cross is good. Have I seen Birdman? I haven't yet. No, I haven't. It's one of those things that I do want to see at some point. Right, I'm going to carry on doing the quest in the background while I chat to you guys about this. Where were we with, with films? So all three Lord of the Rings films combined together without a doubt. Holy Grail. Now, I think one of my favourite films, just from a, a pure artistic point of view, was Fight Club. And 
I understand that every young guy likes Fight Club, and every young guy sees themselves as Tyler Durden. But then when you start to understand life a bit more, you realise that actually Tyler Durden is pretty much a satire of the toxic masculinity that's infecting this guy's life and making him think he has to be like this. But Fight Club was an excellently made film with an excellent message behind it of effectively uh, modern man's search for meaning within a what they come to see as a meaningless society. Oh, war film. If we're talking about the best war film that's not... Someone said the best war film that's not based on a real war. If we're talking about the best war film that's not based on a real war, then would you like to know more? Because it's an alien planet. A bug planet. It's Fritz Klandathu. That's what it is. If we're talking about the best... The best war film not based on a war, then I'm from Buenos Aires and I say kill them all. Yeah. Without a doubt, Starship Troopers is just one of the absolute best war films. It's just, it's Imperial Garden Tyranids. That's what it is, man. It's Imperial Garden Tyranids. Search the bookcase in Varrock. Right, we, okay, teleport to Varrock, off we go. Yeah, without a doubt, Starship Troopers, phenomenally good film. Someone said that's a weird way to say Avatar. I, oh man, Avatar. I, this was actually part of our study in uni. Avatar was one of the strangest film kind of elements of all time. Strangest film events, if you will. And I've talked about this before on stream, but it fascinates me. Avatar broke all the records and left no cultural impact. It left technological impact because people liked the whole kind of the fact there was a good 3D film, the fact they made uh, incredible CGI planets, they put a lot of work into the behind the scenes stuff. It was technically extremely impressive, but culturally, almost no one cared about Avatar. It didn't leave any lasting cultural impression. I mean, think about think about the cultural impact of Star Wars. Almost unprecedented at the time. Everyone knows about Star Wars. Almost everyone's seen Star Wars. Star Wars has infected every other element of life. It's insane. Star Wars is a, a cultural zeitgeist. And then you look at Avatar, and almost no one cares. Like, people have seen the film. I mean, statistically, everyone's seen the film like five times. But... It just didn't change how the world, you know, worked. It didn't change science fiction too much. It didn't change culture. It didn't infect non-film people. Everyone was massively hyped about it. I mean, you walk into a toy shop now, there are almost endless rows of toys from Avatar The Way of Water. And who's buying them? Which, which kid is going to be absolutely stoked this Christmas to open an Avatar The Way of Water toy. I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't be appreciative of gifts that you get given. I'm saying that if you consider the amount of people who would be totally happy opening the Lego Millennium Falcon and compare that to the amount of people who would be happy opening anything from Avatar more people are probably going to want that falcon. Let's be real. Let's, I'm not saying avatars, you know, if you like it, if you're into it, great. If that's how you want to live your life, you live your life that way. But no, I've just not bothered watching the new avatar at all. It's just reskinned Pocahontas. Also, can I just go off on a rant about avatar for a second? There's, there's been a second avatar film. I'm going to assume, correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm going to assume the humans lose again. Is that kind of where we're going with this one in general. If you've seen it in the chat, just let me know if that's the, the general thing, because do the humans lose again? Okay, cool. So we've effectively lost two conflicts, if you will, with, with blue people. When are we going to just nuke them? I think I realised that I didn't like Avatar when halfway through I realised I was absolutely on the side of the military general. The dude who'd promised, he'd promised Jake Sully to get his legs back, and then he had those badass walking mechs in the jungle. And halfway through, I'm kind of like, I get it. You know, I under I'm, I'm kind of on your side at this point here. Like, we've lost two wars to blue aliens. And in Avatar 1, we even saw that there were, like, really cool flying gunships. And yet they got shot down. 
There was a scene in Avatar 1, and I'm sorry to go off on a rant, I don't care if this loses me viewers or respect, but this is important science-wise. There is a scene in Avatar 1 when one of the human gunships is flying, and then one of the stupid bird things flies over it, and they shoot like a bow and arrow from above it, and the, the arrow goes through the plexiglass of the gunship and stabs into the, the pilot flying. How weak does your plexiglass need to be? for an arrow to go through it. Can we not just, like, put another layer of a grill? Maybe some kind of second... I mean, double glazing. We invented that a while ago. Plastic? Maybe even just bend it. I'm sorry, but there is a point. There is a point where I'm like, you know what? These guys are losing because they're stupid. And at that point, I just... What's a good example of a film where the bad guys are legitimately dangerous? You know what? As far as TV goes, you know the scariest thing on TV that I ever watched? I'm not even a joke here. The Borg. Star Trek, The Next Generation, The Borg, legitimately scary. Every single time The Borg turned up in an episode, you were like, all right, these are, these mean business. Gus Fring in Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, yeah, Gus Fring turns up, guy means business. Homelander turns up, you're in trouble. Guy means business. Also, how good is the boys? Let's just admit that. The boys, if I ever do a cosplay, I want it to be Billy Butcher. That's why I need to find a friend with blonde hair who can do Homelander. And we, we definitely need to have like a group cosplay of all of uh, the boys and then the seven next to them as well. I would definitely do that. News, Callum, have Callum do Homelander, and I'll turn up as Billy Butcher. Get the whole, uh, get the coat for it, get the, the flowery Hawaiian shirts and everything. I'd do that. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah, The Empire Strikes Back. Again, I, I find it very easy to get invested in films where the bad guys are legitimately dangerous. And even when the bad guys win, I think the reason that I didn't like Avatar as much was because the, the, the bad guys in the film, which were the humans, just seemed incompetent. And yet they had so much stuff that um, that would have been great. The, I've said before many times that the best bad guy in any film is uh, Ed Harris in the film The Rock because you completely agree with him. You, you're watching him, you're like, yeah, I get it. I'm kind of on your side with this one. Okay, so we have learned the emotes Goblin Salute and Goblin Bow, which allow us to do this. Travel through the tunnels under Lumbridge until you reach Mistag. So back to Lumbridge and off we pop. Second Avatar film, the humans are even more stupid. Oh, God. No, it's just, it's a real shame. It is a real shame. So yeah, we were, this whole tangent was about films. Um, let's talk about film. Am I excited for more Animist later tonight? Animist is going to come back to haunt me forever, isn't it? I'm never going to be able to escape from Animist. That's going to be it forever. Stephen King's The Mist. Yeah. Horror is scary when you can't beat it, when you don't know what it is, when you are unsure of what you're taking on or unsure of how to win. Yeah. Yeah, The Mist. Again, very scary. I recently watched Fast X and Jason Momoa was incredibly fun. I've seen clips of Jason. I think he can act really well. Like, the guy is a solid actor, without a doubt. Absolutely solid actor. Oh, by the way, guys, in case you care and you're in the game right now, I have set up a, a kind of clan... It's not a clan chat, it's more like a chat channel. Um, it's just lazy strife, uh, same as the, same as the actual account name. Right, so there is a line that I have to follow. Darcy, do you know this line? Because I'm trusting you here, my friend. I'm trusting. Let's see. If if Darcy steps off this line, I'm gonna need to step back on because otherwise I may take damage. So, ooh, okay, Darcy, are you going through this quest at the same time? Lead us to ruin. Lead us... Oh, okay. They're doing okay. No, you're not on this quest at the same time. You just know the quest really well. Or you're just watching the stream and memorizing. I have a skill. <laughs> Darcy's, like, <laughs> called the wiki. Oh, God. I thought that you just, for some reason, decided to memorize the exact path that this quest needed. Can you imagine that? Hey guys, you got any party tricks? I do. All right, is it something sexy? Kind of. All right, can you like tie a tie a knot in a cherry stem using just your tongue and your mouth? Can you sing well? You do a one hundred press up? No, no. 
boot up old school RuneScape. Let me show you something. I'm going to be honest, I would, uh, I would kind of find that a little bit sexy. If someone walked up and was like, hey, I know the exact path of how to get through uh, Morning's End Part 2 without the wiki, I'm like, take me now. Uh, that's it. That's all the flirting I need. We are, <laughs> we are revved up and good to go as soon as you said that. Fantastic. I am very much not looking for... Oh, 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 Darcy. Oh, 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 it's a good thing I was paying attention there, Darcy. We, we nearly got led into ruin. My goodness. We were nearly led toward danger. You distracted me. Don't go blaming me, Darcy. I'm putting all of my faith into you right now. Well... I say all of my faith. 99% of my faith. There's 1% of my faith that is very much like, no. Stupid Olive has now run through and you're either part of this chain or you're just really intrigued that loads of people are just running through to the goblins. Mistag, how's it going? Hey, stupid Olive, hopefully you're having a lovely day. Darcy got hot and bothered. I was just told on what I find attractive. You guys want some ASMR? All right. Here's some ASMR for you. Oh, yeah. People are like, oh my god, are you drinking on stream? No, no, nothing alcoholic, right? I'm, I'm not a badass. People are like, oh, maybe Josh is cool. Maybe he's he's cracking open a cold one. He's having a beer with the boys. No, no, it's it's a can of monster, okay? it's. I was going to pour that into my teacup then when there's still tea. Nearly made a mistake there. Drank the tea. Mug's now empty. Now we can refill it with Monster. Okay? Not sponsored, but would be. Get on it, Monster. Look, I've gone on this rant before. If Monster can give a flavour to Lewis Hamilton... Again, not sponsored, but it's... Lew what is Lewis Hamilton flavour? Who went around licking celebrities to work out who would make the best Monster flavour? How do you get that job? That's what it... It's his sweat. They just attach cans to him as we walk around. Right, so we need to perform the Goblin Bow next to Mistag and then talk to him. Goblin Bow. A human knows the ancient greeting. I do. Well, whoever went around licking celebrities to work out who would make the best monster flavor. Monster, hit me up, man. Seriously. All right. Get someone around here and they can lick me and then I... Stop it. This is a serious business discussion. This is going to be the clip we send to Monster. And then we will see if you want to sell a, a Strife flavor. All right, we could do it. We could make it happen. Just saying. Just saying I would absolutely, without a doubt, be willing to, to sell my name to a flavor of Monster. You know, got to make that Strife flavor dance for the ad. This is the ad. This is it right now. See that just there? That dance? That's the ad. This is happening. Have I considered moving to kick? Oh, jocks, mate. You you missed a great rant earlier. I'll recycle it in about two hours, okay? Right, talk to Duke Horatio in Lumbridge Castle. You can fast travel with Mistag back to Lumbridge. Okay, cool, we can fast travel. It says you can fast travel, so back to Lumbridge we go. Oh, there was a great cake rant earlier. I'm going to recycle it in about two hours. Now, it did say that Mistag could come with me. But uh, you can fast travel with Mistag. Maybe you need to actually use the spell. Myth, I'm going to follow you. Myth, I'm following you right now. That's it meant follow. Hang on. Talk. To you can fast travel with Mistag. Oh, right. You need to right click on Mistag and choose follow. You right click the fella. Oh, we failed. Hang on. Talk to Posty Pete. Posty Pete. I know. Sure, anything for Molly. Mate, just because I've been to some British universities, all right, I'm not going to talk about that on stream. Tell her to get stuffed. All right, I'm a responsible adult, and I will not do anything for Molly. It's very true. Right. Let's just see if we can go and talk to the Duke right now. Let's just, uh, let's just chat to the old Dukey boy. See if he's there. Julie, good evening to you. Welcome to the stream. Favourite Tarantino film? I mean, Pulp Fiction's a good one. Let's be real. Pulp Fiction is a good one. But I, I do have a soft spot for Kill Bill. Firstborn says, Josh, please, and then a sad face. What's the sad face for? Talk to Duke Horatio. Hey, uh, I've made contact with the cave goblins, my dude. They seem friendlier. They are, they are there. 
Right, pickpocket Sigmund for a key. Sigmund, let me stick my hands in your pockets. And give me your little key. Got it. And they open the chest in the room next to the Duke's room. Darcy, I'm going to follow you to that room. Please walk over there. RuneScape looks worse than this normally. It does. This is actually very, very high quality RuneScape right now. I'm going to take a sip of tea. But all the people here before know that it's Monster. Apparently this room is called the Bot Room. There are no bots here. Oh, fuck. Well, okay. I spoke too soon there. There are a lot of bots here. Okay, let's just uh, use the key on the chest. And uh, Jagex sort it out. All right, we found some ham robes in the chest. No bots here. Apparently there are. Apparently there absolutely are. What was the one that turned into a vampire film halfway through? Wasn't that Dog Soldiers? I'm sure that was one of them. There was, yeah, there was a weird one. There was a Tarantino film that becomes a vampire thing halfway through. From Dusk Till Dawn, that was the one. From Dusk Till Dawn. Enter the ham lair, west of Lumbridge. Climb down the staircase. Beer or wine? Neither. Pure Lewis Hamilton sweat. Dog Soldiers is that weird werewolf film, wasn't it? Yes. You said that's the best werewolf film. All right, disagree strongly. Okay, I love you. I'm sure you're great. But I think we can all agree the greatest werewolf film of all time is Van Helsing. If I ever meet Hugh Jackman. It's not about X-Men. It's not about the greatest showman. It's about Van Helsing. Hugh, tell me about Van Helsing. What was it like? Every I need to know, because my God, that was a weird film. Van Helsing is one of those films that I show people, and then I'm just I'm grinning the entire way through the film. I just so you know, if you ever watch a film with me, I do that weird thing where I don't watch. If I've seen the film before, I don't watch it. What happens is I stare at you when the good bits happen, and if you don't effectively respond in the way that I think is correct. We pause the film and I interrogate you as to why. That's what it is. So we'll we'll be watching the film, a funny bit will come up, and I swear to God, if you if you bring your phone out, if you start talking to your friends, I'm pausing the film, we're rewinding it, we're watching it again. Right? It's not about your enjoyment of the film. It's about my enjoyment of your response to the film. Right? This is not about you. This is about me. When we're like, oh, yeah, let's watch this film. Fine. And okay, I will be honest as well. I need to understand. And this is how I can... Uh, oh, we've found the Lumbridge silverware. Take the silverware to Duke Horatio. We found it immediately. Right, cool. Uh, Matter, could you please walk back toward the ladder? This is how I can tell that you and me are going to be friends. All right. Let me set the scenario for you. Let me set the scene. And then you can tell me... You know, Matter, I'm going to go up the ladder. Let me set the scene. And you can tell me what you would do in this situation. We've sat down to watch a film. The screen goes black. The opening words. I feel it in the water. It's Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. We're watching it. Extended editions, obviously. Who even owns the non-extended ones? Halfway through that film, Viggo Mortensen kicks a helmet. What do you do at that moment? Do you turn to me? And do you look at me? And do I turn to you and do I look at you? Which of us say it first? Maybe at the same time. Maybe we go together. Maybe we go... Did you know... That he actually broke his toe? When he kicked that helmet? Yeah, okay. We're friends. But we're not best friends. Not yet. Best friends come later. Best friends are during the scene when he's fighting, is it Lurz? And Lurz throws the dagger, throws the knife through the air. And Vigo deflects it with his sword. And that's when we turn and look at each other and smile. And we go, did you know he actually deflected that? The stuntman was meant to throw that dagger to the side. Then they were going to use camera angles to make it look more dangerous. But through a mistake, 
he actually threw it at Vigo, and Vigo, no longer Vigo, actually Aragorn at that exact moment, decided. He, de he decided, he's like, you know what, I like living, this film's pretty good. I'm going to deflect this dagger. He could have missed if he wanted to. He chose not to. He deflected it. Yeah, there we go. Oh my good god damn, I get to see your stream. All right, look, time. You're going to have to lower your expectations. Right now we're talking about things about Lord of the Rings that everyone already knows. Okay? We're really, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel of trivia here. I'm not exactly... Look, film trivia. For the next three hours, that's all I'm going to tell you. My favourite fact about Lord of the Rings, though, without a doubt, and I'm sure this is canon, 100% going with this now, Frodo has absolutely no idea who Legolas is. That's what... I've got proof of this as well. You've probably all seen the clip of this. You probably all know exactly where I'm going with this. Frodo has no fucking clue who Legolas is, why he's there. Legolas says one line to Frodo literally the entire series. All he says is, and my bow, or you have my bow. That's pretty much it. Apart from that, nothing else happens. That's it. And you can tell that Frodo has no bloody clue who he is, because when Frodo wakes up in Rivendell after being injured and everyone walks into the room, he greets everyone by name. He's like, Sir Merry Pippin Gandalf Gimli! You! He has no idea who Legolas is. He, 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 go back and watch the scene. All he does is Legolas walks in and smiles, and then Frodo smiles. I really wish there was an extended scene where kind of Frodo just leans over to Gandalf's like, who's that? And Gandalf is like, I don't know. He's just been, he's good with a bow. He's following us. We're just letting him join in. What it feels like, it feels like a school trip where two schools have gone to like a theme park like Alton Towers at the same time and one person from one school has just wandered into the other school trip. But they're kind of cool, so everyone's just going with it. Everyone's like, yeah, they're our friend now. They're going to hang out with us for the rest of the day. Then they'll go back to their school at the end of the day. No one's annoyed. Just no one has any idea what that person's name is. That's what it is. 100% sure about that. That's all it is. Okay, we can right-click and follow Kazgar. But uh, my favourite fact about Lord of the Rings is, without a doubt, Frodo has no clue who Legolas is. That's brilliant. I like that. Did I do that? Look, I may have done. All right, you... I may have been on a school trip at some point, and I was maybe in, like, year six, year seven. It's, it's like early high school years. And, obviously, I, I wasn't a popular kid because I played RuneScape. And uh, obviously now that would be different. I'm, a, I'm an unpopular man who plays RuneScape. I've evolved. But yeah, halfway through being on a school trip to Alton Towers or to like a big theme park, I kind of thought, this is lame. I'm going to wander off and see what's going on. And if anyone knows me in real life, you'll know that I do that a lot. Like, if I'm at a, a an event, if I'm at a group convention thing, I will wander off and just do stuff. You, you can look around, you have no idea where I'm going to be, I will just randomly go to certain places. You, you, you'll look, I'll be part of your group and I'll be gone. So, for example, here's an interesting one. When, when I went to visit Jagex, I'm going to keep using their mug because I, I feel bad for, for taking it. But when we went to visit Jagex, there was a bit, kind of, we went for dinner afterwards, lots of the, the RuneScape 3 streamers and some of the Jagex staff joined us, and there was a moment where we had to get somewhere. And the choice was order, like, three taxis or walk. And the walk would take 30 minutes. Not just kind of, like, through town. And the discussion lasted a long time. The discussion, it, it was going to last a long time. It was five minutes of, oh, but we can go in a taxi together. We can go here. We can go there. Oh, but we can go there. Oh, but we can walk there. After about three minutes, I thought, you know what? It's going to take longer to kind of organize the logistics of this than it will be just walk. So I kind of just went, guys, I'm walking. Anyone wants to join me, you're welcome to. And I just walked off. Uh, I had Google Maps on my phone, obviously. Within about two or three minutes, I turned around and there were like five or six people who just decided to follow me. The reason I do this is when you're trying to organize a large group of people to do one specific thing, sometimes you actually spend more time trying to organize the logistics of something than it would take to just do something the long way or do something the hard way, if you will. 
And what a lot of people are waiting for is almost permission to just go and do something. So whenever I'm in a group of people and there's like, you know, 30 or 40 people waiting to, to do something, I'll just be like, right, I'm going to do this and I'll go and do it. And some people think it's very rude, but some people see it as a fantastic lifeline to just grab onto and be like, right, someone's made a choice. We're going to go and do this. It's almost like a work meeting where you try and get, you know, 20 to 30 people on the same page. Ain't going to work. Just have one person decide to do something and other people can follow them if they want to. It's like herding cats. It is. But I'm the cat that will just walk off and do the thing that I think is right anyway. Some people hate it because they're like, where the fuck has Josh gone? And some people love it because they're like, oh, finally. OK, we're, we're doing this now. We're going this way. Great. Congratulations. You've completed Lost Tribe. Congrats, guys. One more quest down. Remember, we've only got to do five quests a week to complete the quest cape in under a year. Remember this. We've also advanced to mining level, so grats. All right, Lost Tribe done. Next quest, Death to the Dorgashun. Right, Death to the... Oh, this is the one with the bloody stupid uh, maze thingy. Okay, what do we need? We need agility and thieving. I think we've got both of those. We do. Yep, that's fine. Uh, the ability to defeat a level 50 enemy with melee or magic. I'm going to go with melee. Yeah, we've, we've probably got enough. I'll get some food. Um, someone has to trim some food. Re required light sources. Got them. That's fine. Uh, two full sets of ham robes. Don't think I have those yet, but I'm sure someone can just trade them to me. Pickaxe, weapons, armor, games, necklace. Okay, cool. Chisel, sapphire, lantern, pickaxe, rope. There's a lot of stuff here that we need. This might be... This might take some time. So, first of all, we need to go to the bank. Um, Darcy, I'll follow you because you're always useful. Darcy, can you want me to the bank, please? Here's another one that I do. And, again, I want to get people's opinion in the chat about whether I'm right or wrong. You have the clan chat set to friends only. Ah, oh, okay, hang on. Let me, uh, let me sort that out. Who can enter? Anyone? Done and done. There you go. Sorted. Right, we can climb down the trapdoor. Can we use the, the bank down here now? I can't use the bank down here. Can I? Let's find out. Can I can I use this bank? Cough, welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're having a lovely night. Let me see if I can you doubt me. I do doubt you, Darcy. I was wrong. I was wrong and you were right. I apologize. Right, now I actually do need some defense for this and I'm gonna need more defense than I've currently got so let me just let me set some stuff up I've got to be pretty badass with this I'm gonna go with the cabbage shield because the cabbage shield is weirdly good now uh, we've got Excalibur we've got the cabbage shield everything else is fine I'm not changing any of that that's all good I might go with a ring ring of life yeah let's wear the ring of life just in case I die Right, let me see what I need now. So we've got the tinderbox, we've got all the stuff. Um, Death of the Dorgashun, let's see what I need. Full sets of ham robes, I'm not bothering to get them. Someone else can get them for me, that's fine. Don't need a knife. Do I need the brooch? Don't think so anymore. I don't know why I've got a black chin chomp or an orange on me, but I definitely don't need those. Spices, probably not. I'll keep a pickaxe, that's always useful. And the Goblin Symbol book can go away. Okay, we need two full sets of hand robes and recommended as a games necklace. We'll get a games necklace. And probably some shark. I think I'm using... Yeah, shark's good. Uh, ooh, two full sets of hand robes, so we cannot take anywhere near as many shark. We're probably not going to be teleporting to Ardoon anytime soon, so I will stick the Ardoon teleports away. I'll grab some more shark closer to the, the fight, if you will. Um, yeah, melee gear is fine. Okay, cool. I think I'm looking good now. Uh, stupid. Oh, you guys are actually in the chat, so I can see who's in the chat now. Much easier. Much, much easier. Myth is trading with me. Myth, you're about to give me all these things. Goodness me, hers. Thank you very much for the gifted subs. That's remarkably kind of you. That is beautiful, Myth. I don't think I have that many. Let me give you all these shark. I'll take those, and then I'll rearrange what I do and don't need. Hang on. That works really well. Thank you very much. That is perfect. 
I don't know why anyone struggles getting a quest cape. It's really easy. All you need to do is have everyone give you everything. It's a very simple thing to do. I may as well bank the bullseye lantern because, you know, that ain't that ain't useful yet. Monkfish. I'll take one monkfish. Why the heck not? One monk. One monkfish just in case. Okay, where do we go? We need to go to. Uh, where do we start? Bring the following items. Travel through the tunnels and talk to Miss Tag. Okay, Coco, please lead me to those tunnels just over there. Here's what I'm talking about. Hey, Josh, can you add me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Uh, hang on, that was just a message instead. A, I think you already added. Nine, yeah, you already added, that's fine. So here's something I do a lot. Have you ever been in a, a group? You banked your light source. No, I've got my lit torch. I actually can't light the lantern. I can only use the lit torch, which may explode. So if that explodes, we're going to light it with the tinderbox again very quickly, or we have to teleport away. Okay, one of the two. Myth, I'm going to follow you here. Uh, actually, just follow Kazgar. Anyway, the, the situation I was talking about. Have you ever been in a group of people, maybe 10, 15, 20 people, and you all need to get something to eat? And there is nowhere that is going to take a group of 10, 20, 30 people. But no one is willing to go and get themselves something to eat and then meet up later. Everyone is just waiting for someone to organize everyone. This is one thing that really irritates me personally. It gets to me very, very quickly. So this normally happens at conventions. Because I like to try and be as social as I can at conventions. What happens is... I'll be at a convention. There'll be 10, you know, 15, 20 people hanging around. We're all content creators. We're all friends. We all know each other. Sometimes people that know us from YouTube or Twitch come up and say hi, and we're more than happy to hang around with you guys and chat. That's all cool. Everyone gets to be, you know, equal at this level. And then someone says, oh, we should go and get some dinner. And we, we call up all the local restaurants. No, we can't get a reservation. No, we can't do that. Oh, we should do this, do that. It takes so long. Eventually, you have to say to people, look, why don't we just break down into smaller groups of three or four people Everyone go and get their own food and then meet back up here in half an hour. Meet back up here in an hour. That's the way we do it. And people go, oh, no, I don't want to split up. Oh, no, I don't want to I don't want to have dinner without you guys. We ain't getting a table for 20 people somewhere. It ain't happening. This is just dinner. So after about five minutes of those kind of conversations, here's what I do. I say, I am going there. I'm walking now. If you want to come with me, you can. But somebody else should go over there. Somebody else should go over there. Because even with 20 people on a table, I'm only talking to the three or four people around me. I'm going to make my choice, and then other people can make their choice. It's not that I'm dumping people or leaving people or running away. It's that the logistics of organizing this make it so much easier to split down into smaller groups. That's what I tend to do. And I'm not ignoring you, not ostracizing you, just leaving for a bit. And the people that... The people that get it are the people that also have busy lives. I mean, one of my favorite guys, I really like hanging out with him, is Ash Valmont. You've got Ash Valmont, you've got Blitzy, and you've got Kai. Uh, like, I always see these guys as like the Three Musketeers, the kind of trio. Kai's lovely, uh, does streaming, does cosplay, does Warhammer. Super talented guy. Um, Ash is mostly active on TikTok, and Blitzy does Twitch. And does some cosplay stuff. Yeah, uh, I think it's not 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 the the huge. What's Kai's last name? Hang on, I'll find out for you. But now Kai is is super cool. I don't think it's the world's biggest Kai like you're thinking of right now. Let me see if I can find his name. Hang on. Doo -doo -doo. Kai Winter. That's the one. Kai Winter. Now, Kai Winter. These guys are sound. And the cool thing is, is they all understand exactly what the lifestyle is like. So ever ever I'm at a convention with these guys, and. We need to talk to Zanik, wherever Zanik is. Right, where's Zanik? It says, bring the following items, travel through, talk to Zanik in Lumbridge Castle's basement. Okay, cool, follow my stack. Whenever I talk to, to Kai and I'm like, right, guys, we've got to get some food, I can look around, I'll look back, and they're gone. And the reason they're gone is because they've already found somewhere that they can eat, they'll grab some dinner, and half an hour later, they'll be free. And it's super easy to wear. Hey, Josh, can you welcome... I can welcome as many people as I possibly can. Uh, first of all, Tim, thank you very much for the subs. That's remarkably kind of you. Can you welcome Anako? Anako, welcome. Hopefully you're having a lovely day. 
But no, Kai's lovely. And the the, pe- the reason I get on with them so well is because Ash is exactly... Ash, Valmont, is exactly like me in the fact that he will just randomly wander off to places. It's just insane. He'll just be randomly walking off. And I think that's great. Because he... Oh, you guys can't talk yet. Hang on, who can talk? Let me... Let me set the thing up so you can all talk to each other. My goodness. You just... Who can... You want so much. Okay, anyone can talk. This is going to go badly, I'm sure. But no, I, I very much like the fact of those guys. I get on really well with them because they are so bloody independent. That's what it is. They are so independent. That and they're just very funny. They're very, very funny. It's not really a clan. It's more like a chat that I've been able to put people into. So you can just join the chat if you want to. And we're going to carry on going around here. Welcome, I saw your art in the Discord. It's lovely. I will have a look in the Discord and check out some art in a second then. There you go. I've got two sets of ham robes for you, Zanuck. There are some some robes. Friends chat, but they can't talk. Excellent. Oh, hang on. They can talk, but they don't. They can talk, but they don't. I love that. I've changed it so everyone can talk, and everyone's like, nothing to say, really. Uh, may I ask who you're... Who are my top five living Brits? Obviously, all five is David Attenborough. All of them. Josh is the only streamer I've seen all day. Josh is the best only streamer I've seen all day. I'll take that. Hey, if I can get first place because nobody else shows up, that's a win. I'll take that. That's a win for me. Right, talk to the Duke. Myth, I'm going to follow you. Please walk me to the Duke. Henry Cavill doesn't make your list. Of course he does. Okay, so top five living British people. Obviously David Attenborough. Henry Cavill. That's it, really. Who else? Stephen Fry? Who else is there that's going to be really good? I mean, there's lots of good British people, without a doubt. Myth, I'm following you again. Please walk me up the steps. Mr. Bean? Yeah, not even not Rowan Atkinson. Mr. Bean specifically. The character of Mr. Bean. David Mitchell. Carl, Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington does make me laugh. This is true. Tim Curry? Is Tim Curry British? I didn't know that. Patrick Stewart? Yeah. Again, there's a lot of good British people. You are literally the only streamer I watch. Good. Um, I'll try and be worthy of that. The Spiffing Brit. I met the Spiffing Brit. He's a lovely guy. You know what? And I'll say this. I'll, I'll give you some tea. I'll give you some drama on the Spiffing Brit. Okay? You guys want to hear some tea? Want me to spill the tea on the drama? You want the reality? So... Here's the truth. Let me just uh, double check this. Leave the castle and go through the entire leaving cutscene. If you cut it short, enter slash leave again. Okay, cool. Right. I'd like to come to the city too. Let me just go through some stuff. Leave the castle. I'm going to follow... I'm going to follow Kokomi. Kokomi, I'm follow you. Let me tell you... The tea. <laughs> On the spiffing brit. When I was at Insomnia a couple of years ago, Insomnia is a big convention in Birmingham in the UK. In fact, I should be there at the uh, the next one. In fact, I think they've just announced that Pyro Cynical is going to be there as well. So, big YouTuber. Hopefully lots of people are able to turn up, meet him. Never met him. Heard he's all right. Hopefully be able to say hi. But I was at Insomnia and I met the Spiffing Brit. Now, he's, of course, a big, big name in YouTube. He's very, very knowledgeable. He's remarkably successful. And this means... He has a lot of people walking up to him and asking him questions about YouTube, about the algorithm, about his content, about his life. He is absolutely inundated with people, without a doubt. Now, he's inundated by two types of people. First of all, fans of his content. And secondly, other creators who want to kind of pick his brains and his knowledge about YouTube in general. And he gives everyone as much time as he possibly can like it was incredible to see the the sheer amount of patience and time that he's got for people he was courteous he was polite he was kind he was patient with everything and you know that whole kind of persona the fact that he's like really friendly it's genuinely real you know there's the drama didn't expect that, did you? You thought I was going to shit all over him. No, 
No, he was like genuine. I mean, I sat and chatted to him for ages about stuff because when I first met him, I was uh, much, much smaller than I am now. But he, he treated everyone with just as much respect and just as much care and just as much importance, whether they had 10 million subs or a thousand. You know, the, the dude was, he's genuine. He cares about what he does. And he's really, really nice. I'm talking about the YouTuber, the Spiffing Brit. He is just as nice as you think he would be. Right, talk to Father Eric. Stupid Olive, I'm going to follow you. Stupid Olive, could you please walk me to Father Eric over in the church? Ah. I don't know. He's genuinely nice. Spiffing Brit was lovely. Have I met the Yogs cast? Not all of them. I met certain members, but not all of them at all. Is Spiff still the leader of the Shadow Cabal? The Shadow Cabal is more like an autonomous collective. Uh, we're all capable of operating without central leadership. But I think if he asked, we have to give the leadership to Henry Cavill. That's that's kind of where we're all leaning at now. We're all kind of pushing toward. Hang on, let me just top up my drink. Why don't your fans want to watch Guild Wars 2? Sure, if my fans want to watch Guild Wars 2, they can go and watch Guild Wars 2. I don't know if the Mighty Teapot's streaming, but he is a he is a damn good Guild Wars 2 streamer. Also a nice guy. Mm. The Shadow Cabal that killed Dreamworld. Yeah, that one. That was the one. Right, let me just chat to some religious person about stuff. And uh, the, the kind of big religious discussion in RuneScape about gods and Bandos and whatnot. Approach the goblins east of the River Lum. Myth, I'm following you now. Back on time. I'm here to listen to stuff. I'm here to say stuff so we can work together on this one. You missed that. I redeemed the Attaboy. Did you? Emilius, let me just double check. Hang on. Because that would be very impressive. I don't know if anyone's redeemed the Attaboy before. Let me just scroll back. See what I've missed. I mean, that's that's a lot of stuff. Have you redeemed that? Emilius, let me find out. Let me scroll back up. It should say in the chat if it was redeemed. Is it? Have I missed that? People in the chat, let me know if I've missed the redemption of the Attaboy. Yes, have I actually missed? I think it's gone now. No, no, it should be in my, uh, my thing still. It should be there. I'm sure that redemptions still get... Uh, still get shown in the thing. If you did, I def missed it. Okay. Okay, we'll go through it. That's fine. I think so. It looks like it, right? Did we lose Zanuck? Oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Approach the goblins east of the river. Lam, can we walk here? Zanuck, where are you? Have we lost the Zanuck? That's fine. Myth, I'll follow you again. We'll find Zanuck. But if you did redeem it, I want you to know that I'm proud of you. And I know that you've struggled. I know that you've not always done the best that you think you can do. And I know that you've you've tried and you've achieved. And there are sometimes that you've done better than you expected. And sometimes you've done worse. And it's okay because success isn't just constant winning. It is little bits. And you try and do a little better every day. So when you come home from trying, whether you've succeeded or not, I will say, boy. You've done well. I'm proud of you. Keep going. You may not be where you want to be yet, but with the right attitude and the right energy and the focus, you will be. Keep going. There you go. That's a hundred thousand channel points, by the way. Zanik, where the hell are you? Like, wh where is... Oh, hang on. Do we have to walk over there specifically? Into the middle? Need to find Zanik. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. We're okay. Oh, there we go. Are those goblins. We've got Zanik. We're all good. You're welcome. You're welcome, son. Kale, good evening to you. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're having a lovely day. Am I going to stream Animist? Not right now. Right now I'm going to continue through Old School RuneScape because we've got some serious progress to make up with these quests. It's also a billion degrees over in the UK. And it's during streams like this that I very much regret the choice of white shirt and waistcoat because it's ridiculously warm. Like, it's insanely warm. It's, it's 18 degrees, he's lying. Look, the UK has two temperatures. Too cold and too hot. One day, I think about seven years ago, it was perfect. That was it. That was the day. You know when someone says, like, you know, it's a, it's a lovely, it's lovely outside temperature? That happened once. That was it. 
Talk to the Lumbridge General Store shopkeeper. Stupid Olive, I'm following you. But no, it's a billion degrees in the UK. And what that means is I am really, really warm. And people will go, oh, Josh, it, it doesn't look like you're sweating in the shirt. There's no sweat patches. That's because it's all sweat. All right. There's no patches. No patches at all. It's just one big bit of white cotton sweat. That's what it is. Now, I'd never tell you that because that, of course, would diminish my sex appeal. But that's the reality. That's the truth of the matter. Okay. Take it off. Want an armpit check? Thank God for Twitch chat. What would I do without you? God. I can't imagine. How have I made it so long without thousands of people willing to do that? Goodness me. How does anyone get anything done in life without a Twitch chat? <sighs> Just think about how weird it would be to walk around like a town centre or something and have 2,000 people following you around and just one of them shouts, Do you want an armpit check? And I'll be like, I'm good. I'm good. Later on, though, I'll give you a call then. But right now, I think we're good. We're doing okay. All right, cool. Zanuck is going to buy a hammer. Remember, I've still got my AstroTurf. My bit. If you weren't here at the start, this will confuse you, but I have still got a bit of AstroTurf. Okay? That's still there. That's still happening. All right. Talk to Zanuck about her head sign. Yo, Zanuck, talk to me, man. Tell me things. Interesting, important stuff. Well, I am confused. I'm confused. He's touching grass. That is legitimately one of the reasons. Allow me to tell you, if you were here... Can we have a show of hands? Who was here at the start? Because I've only got about an hour worth of prepared material. And what happens is, like a comedian that's playing to different audiences, I'm going to need to recycle this hour. So if you were here at the start, you're about to see the same stream again. This is almost like a 24-hour news cycle. You know how a 24-hour news cycle has about, you know, about half an hour worth of actual content, and it just plays it again and again and again and again and again. Okay, that's what's going to happen here. So, right, let me just uh, jump through this big snake, snake thing. You just got here. Fantastic. So, we're going to talk about AstroTurf and then the streaming service Kick. That's what we're going to talk about. And for those of you thinking, oh, oh, Josh is being so funny. He's only got an hour of content. It's not a lie. All right? Pr buckle up happening again if you contact new, new stream plus yeah this is this is new stream plus except the tea has gone and been replaced with energy drink it's the same thing you get to keep all your previous weapons Ugh. new stream plus if you contact AstroTurf companies, they will send you a sample of AstroTurf. You can't see it because it's green, and I've green screened things out. But just trust me on this. This is AstroTurf. Fake grass, fake plastic. Ooh. Oh, hell yeah. ASMR. This is AstroTurf. So, this, as I've said before, is not enough to turf your garden unless you have a very small garden. This, it almost perfectly... I was about to say it almost perfectly blends in with the RuneScape green grass, and then I realised that it would blend in with the green grass because it's being chroma-keyed out and the RuneScape grass is showing through it. The reason I've got this AstroTurf is big Shut up. Shut up. The reason I've got this AstroTurf is... Uh, Bill, I'm going to follow you on this one, Bill. So, Bill, could you please walk me to the ham lair west of Lumbridge? There we go. The reason I've got this is because I wanted to build a jungle in Warhammer 40k scenery, and I'm very cheap. So instead of actually paying for any of the supplies to build a jungle, I just decided to contact the AstroTurf company and be like, hey, can you send me a sample? What I'm now thinking is, how many people do I need to ask for a sample of AstroTurf and then have them send all those samples to me for me to cut this up into a strip to be able to, to glue it on top of or over whatever kind of landscape and make this into a jungle? Plus, when someone says to me now, touch grass, as in go outside, you nerd, Always got it with me. Always got it with me. Okay? I am ready to touch grass at... It's actually quite nice. At all times. 
P.O. Box or Amazon wish list. Oh, my God. Look, if I P.O. Box, I haven't got one yet, but if I do, I swear to God, if I go to check my P.O. Box and all I get is mugs and AstroTurf, I mean, that's a pretty good life right there. That That's good. I'll take that. Talk to Johannes in the southeast of the base. Right, uh, Darcy, I'm following you. Extreme life hacks. Extreme life hacks. A mug with AstroTurf on the inside. There are some things that shouldn't exist. All right. God's love has limits. There are sometimes there are certain combinations of words that you should not say. A mug with AstroTurf on the inside is one of those combinations. That's oh man. There are very few times that a series of words will actually give me a physical response. That was one of them. Now, a mug with AstroTurf on the outside. This seems like a bad idea. I just got plastic in my mouth. That doesn't work. But you know what? We know that now. Now we know. We have learned. Science. What? <laughs> Phil, why are you weird? Phil, I chose to make my living playing a children's medieval clicker game that's 20 years old to an audience of people while I talk about astroturfs and tease my opinions on kick. You can't do this job if you're normal. All right? No one. No one is, is coming out of life normal and going, you know what? I'm going to be a Twitch streamer. You've, you've got to have a little bit of, bit of madness, a little bit of weirdness to do this. Yeah. Are we segueing back to kick? We might be. You don't know. Okay, go stand at the south of the stage until Zanik talks about the speaker. Don't skip the dialogue. Goodness me, Tar, thank you very much for all of the... Uh, Thank you for all the, the subs. That's remarkably kind of you. You have gifted five tier one subs. That is very kind. Another Josh stream today is a good day. Listen to what the speaker's saying. All right, cool. We're going to listen to everything here. We do, do love the... Uh, yes, we do. The people who say no. The people who say no, I won't show my nipples. I'll show a cam that shows a random sock laying on the floor. I'm actually wearing socks today. There we go. Just to impress a few of you. That's what happened. See, I woke up this morning, I'm like, there's a thunderstorm outside. I've got energy drink in a mug, and I'm wearing my jogging bottoms. It's gaming time. That's what happens. It's time to game. That's what that's whenever I sit down to stream, I always say in my in my head, it's time to d -d 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 stream some RuneScape. That's what I say. Please, teacher, can I go and get some food? Only if you bring enough back for everyone. No. Did you know Kick spends more money uh, <laughs> renting Twitch's streaming tech than it makes directly? I did not, because I do not have access to that all those numbers. But can I... G those of you who are here earlier, we're going to go through the same conversation. So just bear with me. All right. This is like the recap. You know, when you watch anime and the start, there's like a recap of what happened previous episode. This is the recap. This is for the, are they Gengar socks? They are not. Not this time. You don't get that this time. So here we go. The hour's up. Let me just uh, open hidden trap door. Pick the lock on the hidden trap door. Time for a nap. He's going off on it again and climb down trap door. Oh, this is the Metal Gear Solid bit, isn't it? I remember this. Yeah, 100% Metal Gear Solid. Stand behind the guard and talk to them so they turn their back to Zanuck. Okay. So do we have to, like, go here? Talk to Zanuck? Right. So where do I have to go in order to... I'm just going to go here for a second. Right. We'll talk about Kick. A lot of people have said that Kick, the other streaming website seems to be fostering a community of much more kind of aggressive, abusive nature, if you will. There's a lot of stuff that has been allowed on Kick or is even encouraged on Kick that is not encouraged or allowed on Twitch. 
People have said to me, streamers specifically, have said it doesn't feel like a safe space. It does not feel like a safe space. It feels much more like a degenerate kind of space. It feels more abusive. It feels like, It's almost encouraged. And it's much easier to get away with stuff on Kick than it is on Twitch. That's what people have told me. Now, Kick is owned by Stake, which is a gambling thing. So what it feels like to me is they they want to encourage people on Kick who are the kind of people who are going to gamble. Because this is their target. This is their demographic. They want people who are going to gamble. Now, statistically, just out of correlation, the average person who is going to gamble might enjoy a slightly more offensive, less snowflake, if you will, um, environment. So when the streamer said to me, oh, kick doesn't feel like it's making itself a a safe, uh, inclusive space, I said, that'd be a bad business choice if it did. It almost doesn't want to. Because as soon as it becomes a safe, inclusive space, it's appealing to the same demographic as Twitch, and Twitch is already established and therefore won't win. The reason that it is actually encouraging this more kind of uh, offensive, abusive space, it's encouraging this more dangerous, if you will, community, is because that's the exact demographic that it wants to appeal to. It actually makes more money if it's edgy. That's my my conspiracy theory, anyway. I I think Kick would do worse if it almost encouraged people. Hang on. Ordinary members aren't allowed here, right? Get him to face away from me. So if I walk over here and then... Ha ha! Ha ha! There we go. Yeah, and then Metal Gear... Metal Gear Zanuck right there. But no, that streamers make more money on Kick, though. That's probably true. However, one thing that a lot of people aren't looking at with this is... Where's the audience? Where And this is the same question I asked earlier. Where would you guys feel safer? As silly as that sounds, because not many people seem to be asking about the audience. Where would you feel safe? Where would you feel more comfortable? Because to me, doing Twitch is mostly a fun thing. I enjoy Twitch streaming. It, it is enjoyable. It is fun. All right, where are we going now? Thanks. Is the coast clear? There's a guard patrolling. Tell me... Okay, we'll wait for him to turn around, then we'll go. Or do you not care? Do you not have a preference of where you would watch someone? Because it's okay if the, if you don't have preference at all. But the audience is mostly on Twitch already, which is fine. So to me, it's a case of where's the audience? And the audience is already on Twitch. Right, talk to Zanuck. Two more guards can't get behind them. If I wait to the end of the corridor, lead him past me. Okay, wait here. Right. And now I run to here. And when he goes past... Excellent! Zanuck shoots. Twitch or YouTube? Yeah. Kick makes me lose faith. We're just on Twitch for you. That's fine. So if... And I've said this before. Yes, Twitch takes a hell of a lot of anyone's kind of money or input. For people that want to support me, one of the best ways to do it is Patreon. That's because when I get the support through Patreon, I'm able to turn down a massive amount of sponsor requests. I get sponsor requests every week from various companies, various mobile games, various peripheral companies, various standing desk things, various gamer drinks. I get so many requests from so many companies. And the reason I'm able to say no to all of them is because Patreon allows me to be stable enough to know that saying no, I'm still going to be able to pay my bills next month. That's what I do that for. Now, people have said to me, oh, I don't want to join your Patreon because I don't get anything. Okay, that's totally understandable. I understand why that would be off-putting. But what I tend to make sure people get is an advert, or at least a negative advert-free experience. Because I've done sponsorships before with companies that I think have actual benefit to you. Because they have benefit to me. People have been like, oh, you took NordVPN? Yeah, I use it. Oh, you took Guild Wars 2? Yeah, I play it. You took the RuneScape 3 mobile client? Yes, it's on my phone. Anything I take, I want to be able to actually have, you know, personal experience with and say, yes, this is good because I think it's a, a benefit to that kind of stuff. But no, the, the amount of stuff that I've uh, I've had offer me sponsorships for things and I've turned around and I've, I've even said to people, I think your product is fine, but I don't use it. And so I would feel bad trying to sell it to you. That's what the Patreon stops. 
The quality of the audience is dependent on the streamer. Very true. I mean, Josh Asmon's or Doug Doug's chat have completely different feels. Okay, look, Doug Doug's chat is an absolute legend. We, we've got a, you know, Doug Doug with Twitch chat, without a doubt, everything in Doug. I love Doug Doug. I love his videos. I love the Twitch streams. I love the YouTube videos afterwards. There's, there's Doug Doug, there's Doug Doug Doug, and there's Doug 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 Doug. All of them. I absolutely bloody, bloody love them. His videos are fantastic. When Twitch chat took over as the mayor of the city, phenomenal, without a doubt. But no, very, very much enjoyed Doug Doug. Excellent, uh, excellent streamer. Right, we've been hit over the head by something. I'm sorry if any of you really, really, really wanted me to uh, actually inspect Zanuck outside the ham base. So how do we leave now? I'm guessing we just open door, pick lock door. We just The door seems very secure. Let's just pick the lock and leave then, shall we? Uh, Doug Doug is mental and fun because good to go every time. Yeah, the guy streams so much. This stream is starting to drag on. <laughs> Such a legendary moment. And then the trolls and everything. Coco, I'm going to follow you. Coco, could you please lead me out of this uh, this area, this place? That would be great. I really like having you say things in the background. I do try to say things in the background. Annika, how are you doing today? Oh, but the Doug Doug has such an understanding of coding as well. It's very impressive to see the, the sheer amount of stuff that he can make happen on the stream is incredible. Uh, Coco, I'm caught behind the door. Thank you very much. Now, I, I very much enjoy his streams. There's a, I mean, I also like Drew Gooden and I like, um, what was the other one? Uh, Eddie, Eddie Burback. He's decent as well. Lots of those. Chad Chad is really funny. I, I enjoy a lot of the more um, kind of conversational streamers right let's just find Zanuck oh no Zanuck's dead let's inspect Zanuck just stopping by to say I loved your Chrono Trigger video oh thank you very much I really enjoyed replaying Chrono Trigger and I'm going to enjoy replaying MDK tomorrow and the next day for the next video on the the Was It Good series which is where I replay MDK and after MDK we're going to replay Jade Cocoon and then Nightmare Creatures so we have a yeah, we have a serious suggestion of stuff. MDK, that's the next one. That uh, super fast shooter on PlayStation 1 and PC. And Jake Cocoon will be there. Will I be replaying them offline? Yes, I don't play the... There's a very specific reason that I don't play the Was It Good games kind of online, uh, on, on stream. And that's because when I'm playing the games for Was It Good, uh, Myth, I'm going to follow you at this moment, when I play the games for Was It Good, I have to actually focus on the game. If I were to play the Was It Good games in the same way that I'm streaming now, this is what you would see. boring isn't it imagine someone joining at that exact moment and thinking this is the the guy that makes the clips this is the clip channel he's not even saying anything he's just sitting there just silently playing runescape just menacingly sat there now could i do that while staring at you i've got to look at the stream but i hang on i wait hey, i'm trying to find the you Hang on. Just let me squeeze through this hole. Myth, I'm following you. Uh, I need to go south. Wait, let me... When I'm following someone, then I'll stare at the camera. My someone has never seen this screen before, just me joining in, just staring at them. The tunnel is blocked with rocks. Use the iron pickaxe on the thing. The most icon... Just let me uh, squeeze through the hole here. Torch might go boom. Yes, torch might go boom. If torch goes boom, how much damage do I take? Myth, I'm following you here. So let's just go this way and hope that no if, if torch goes boom, I'm going to use my teleport to run back to Lumbridge. That's the plan. Okay. I'm just going to stare at the screen. I can't look away right now because I'm in danger. But as soon as I'm out of danger... Then I will be focusing on you guys. Oh, is this the, the wall beast thing here? Oh, no, you made it. Excellent. All right, let me just uh, 
jump across to the stepping stone. Ah, now if I fall in, that's when I think my torch gets unlit. Use unlit torch with tinderbox. There we go. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. It's fine. 100% best old school RuneScape player here. And the reason the torches explode is because there's gas in the tunnel. Myth, I'm going to follow you again. Imagine joining the stream right now. There's so much stuff to click. If there wasn't as much stuff to click, I could stare at the camera for a lot longer. I wonder how far I can get in RuneScape just staring at the camera. Whenever I'm not doing anything, just stare at the camera. Stare deeper, Daddy. Oh, I know what you're into, Zen. Juna says, tell me a story. Zanik is dead. <laughs> oh, what a great story, Mark. Look, come on. Zanik's dead. I brought you a uh, I brought you a dead goblin. There you go. Can I please drink your tears? I understand that's a, if you haven't played RuneScape before, I get that's a strange story to go on, but trust me, we're gonna lick this snake soon. Not like that, we're gonna drink the tears from the wall. Okay? Just let's move on from that. It's just clip after clip after clip, isn't it? My god. Sorting out visas Christmas already. Clip moment. <laughs> this Honestly, all this stream is, is just a series of clips broken up by me trying to play RuneScape. That's all this stream is. I get it. You get it. It's a Sunday. It's a chilled out, relaxed Sunday. Uh, take Zanik to Juna. Juna, hey, I want to talk to you. Come on. She's not fulfilled her destiny. All right, cool. I need some stuff. You must have both hands free to carry the bowl. Let me... Let me use the bowl at this point, and this is one of the only reasons that Rune Light is absolutely... Oh no, I have to collect tears. Ah, uh, look, I'll I'll collect the tears, okay? I will collect the tears, that's fine. Do we want... Is it blue that you want? Blue are good and green are bad? I think blue are good and green are bad, aren't they? We'll go with blue, good, green, bad. Blue, good. Excellent. Okay. Blue, good. I can click blue. This is fine. I have to click at some point. This is going to be how I train most of my skills, by the way, as well. Oh, we actually we did it. That was it. Josh needs a clip it emote. Clip it and ship it, guys. We're done. Hang on. Let me just pour my tears over this dead goblin. Because that's how RuneScape works. That's how you survive. Sometimes when your goblin dies, you just got to trust a snake to cry. RuneScape is a bit strange when you look at it like this. Pour one out for Xanax. More unhinged staring, please. This is my scary stare. Should we change it to the sexy stare? What about my accusing stare? Accusing stare. I'm scared. I feel the electricity in your brain. Thank you. Just a still picture of yourself. <laughs> just, just take a screenshot and stick that on instead of a camera. Doesn't even need to be a live cam. Just a screenshot of me staring at the camera. That would work. That would so work. We'll do that next time. I'll make that happen. Okay, cool. These guys have a meeting of stuff. Death to the dog is shoon, they say. I mean, it's, it's important to have a club, isn't it? Death of the Dog of Shoon, Xanax alive, uh, full ham robes, search a crate south of the farm, east of Lumbridge. All right, Darcy, I'm going to follow you. Can we just teleport to Lumbridge? Does that work? Yeah, we, we can teleport to Lumbridge, can't we? Talk to Xanax, teleport to Lumbridge. Yeah, teleport to Lumbridge. Xanax will follow me, that's fine. 
Next stream is just a recorded three-hour stare with RuneScape in the background and nobody's going to notice. Right, the combat bit is coming up, so equip the stuff. And I should probably go to the bank. Myth, could you walk me to the bank, please? I'm, I'm not going to change any of my equipped stuff. Okay, we're going to do this combat fight with a fedora, a trench coat, some shorts, the fancy boots, Excalibur, and a cabbage shield. This is happening. This is the way, and, and the parrot, obviously. This is how it's going to work. Am I prepared for this? Probably not. It's fine. Don't worry. We're going to be okay. We'll do fine. Bill, can you walk me to the bank, please, Bill? Billiam. Billathy. There we go. Jump into the, uh, jump into the old bank. Right, what I need now is, I probably don't need the game's necklace. I'll take the Dorgashoon robes. I think I need those still. But I'll also take a combat potion. We'll go with a super combat potion. And then we'll go with just more shark, to be honest. Just like a ton more shark. Ah, there we go, we're good. Darcy, I'm following you. Talk to Zanuck on the Lumbridge Castle. Yep, talk to Zanuck, here we go. Yes, I am indeed using the Cabbage Shield. Let's go. Let's do it. Off we go. Search a great south of the farm, east on Lumbridge. Right. Uh, Myth, walk me to the, the ladder, please. Who uses the Cabbage as a shield? I do. Don't pretend I shouldn't. What is my slash played? Probably not that long. Stupid Olive, I'm following you. Could you please walk me north of Lumbridge? Thank you. That would be terrific. Here we go. We need to be northeast of Lumbridge, the farm that is northeast. That would be great. Hi, Josh. How did I manage to find a game so bizarre as Animist? It's actually very easy. You go on Steam, you search for MMO, and then you order by user reviews, and then you just scroll down really far. That's pretty much it. Is this a Quest Cape speedrun? Kind of. It's a Quest Cape lazy run. That's what it is. So I'm not an Iron Man. I'm actually the exact opposite. I'm not doing everything myself. I'm trying to do nothing myself. I'm only following people. Uh, if I need an item in the game, someone has to trade it to me. If there's an enemy to kill and someone else can weaken it for me, they will do. I'm trying to effectively outsource the effort of getting a quest cape to the community. So it's not really a speed run. It's more of a, a quest cape, chilled out walk that I'm not really doing it. You know those old kind of fashioned, uh, the, the princess would sit on the chair and you'd have like four guys carrying each corner. That It's that, but translated to RuneScape. And I'm the princess and the community is, is everyone else. There we go. That's how it's working. Can someone kill Elvog for you? I don't know. We'll find out. Right, so I search this crate. Let's see what's going on now. All right, search the crate. I don't know. What are you thinking, Xana? Are you going to sit in the crate? You can sit in the crate, and then you can be in the box. All right, Xana's in the box. Enter the trapdoor outside the farm. Where is the trapdoor? Guessing we wait now. Xana, I've searched crate. Come on. I've told you to get in the crate. Do it. Get in the crate. You ought to have both hands free. God damn it, Zanuck. Fine, I'll eat my monkfish and a shark. And then I'll make both hands free. Then we'll do this. Is the chair you sit on chat? Yes, Coburn. In many ways, I am sitting on the chat. That's how it works. Not in that way. I'm sure some of you would pay some good money on OnlyFans for that. But once, once, once Kick get back to me with my 101 million offer, then I will consider just chilling yeah just that that duck that duck in the crate he's having a why is there a single duck in the crate i don't know if that's meant to happen but there is one single high definition duck just hanging out in the crate right uh, not catch baby i'm playing go down trap door here we go go down the trap door enter the trap door he says only people doing things Enter the trapdoor outside the farm. Only people helping assemble the machine are allowed down there. Can I... Ha oh, you need ham robes. Okay, hang on. Hang on. Okay, ham robes are all on. Go down trapdoor. Now they think we're part of this. Can I now 
remove my ham robes and put back on the weapons I can. All right, well, I've got a... Ooh, I don't like that. So, well, I can't follow you guys for this, so I've got to actually do this bit, unfortunately. Oh, goodness me. Okay, hang on. Uh, kill the guards to the west. Right, let's attack these guards one at a time. Here we go. Attack guard. Oh, I had vengeance on for some reason still. I can't kill... Good God, Sigmund hits like a bit of a truck. Let's just drink a super combat potion first, shall we? And then auto retaliate should be on for this one. I might need to even start running away. Oh, I see. So basically you... Sigmund will pray against whatever you use, so Zanuck has to be the one to take them out. Gotcha. This is one of those moments where I've got to actually pay slightly more attention to the stream, simply because I'm in combat and I don't want to die and you guys can't help me. Someone give this man 43 prayer worth of bones. I will need to get prayer at some point and I do need someone to just give me a load of bones. That's what needs to happen. Not wanting to die doesn't sound very lazy. Well, I mean, it's always an option, don't get me wrong. Can you use our house for training? Yes, I can, which means I can just stand in someone's player-owned house and someone... How much would it cost for you guys just to trade me enough bones to get to 43 prayer? Probably. I can give you one bone, but don't take it the wrong way. You subscribe at a high enough tier, I'll take it whichever way you like. Oh, there we go. I went there. Oh my goodness. What a streamer. What a streamer moment. See? There's a clip right there. I'm in the entertainment industry. It's okay. We all understand. Come on, Zanuck. Attack Sigmund. Saradomin, protect me. But when you're protected from the goblin, mate, I'm going to slap you around with my sword. Yeah, that's it, Zanuck. Take your robes off and get slapped by this sword. What a great chat up line. That would work on me. My payment is sitting in the chat. Excellent. I appreciate that. Two months ago, you gave me VIP and said you'd ban me at the end of the stream. Did I? Nothing happened that I'm still carrying this badge awkwardly. Release me. No. No. No, you have to live with that. If I told you I would ban you at the end of the stream. So I gave you VIP and then told you I would ban you and never did. Oh, that sounds like some that sounds like chaotic evil. I would do that. How much do I play this account? I only play this account when I'm on stream. That's it. This is an on stream only account. This has been a lot of effort. This this fight has so far been the most effort I've put into anything. Okay, he had a ring of life and vanished. That's fair. So now we smash the drilling machine. Uh, the drilling machine has been smashed. And now we leave the area via the exit to the south. To f you know how sometimes people say that there are squares in RuneScape that no one's ever walked on? I wonder if any of these squares in this room have never been walked on. If I walk on every square here, I wonder if I'll be one of the random accounts that's just walked on a square that almost nobody else has. I wonder. Because Jagex have said there are squares in the game that nobody's ever walked on. And I just, I can't imagine. Hanani's probably, Hanani's done it. For God's sake, Hanani's done everything. I don't even know why I'm playing RuneScape anymore. Just every time I have an idea, oh, Hanani's done it. Fine. Let's go marry Hanani if you like them so much. But in all seriousness, there are squares people have not walked on. Mostly in, like, random quest areas. I think someone used a tracker to walk on every square. Hanani is the Simpsons of RuneScape. Hanani did it first. Yeah. Yeah. So Hanani's already married Hanani. God damn it. I bet someone walked in every square in the game wondering the same. QA testing at its finest. Hanani has. I swear to God, if I get this quest cape and I'm like, I bet I'm the first person to get a quest cape by entirely outsourcing the effort, someone will say that Hanani's done it. I know that they made a public account, but I don't know if that public account got a quest cape. I don't know. And if it did, then fine. Fine, they've done it first. Oh no, my Tomb Raider last... It crashed. What did it crash for? React to Hanani's video on every square. I could do that. 
I didn't get quite you didn't it didn't get the quest cape. I see. Okay, so we might be one of the first community quest capes. Total quest points 94. We've done another quest. Death to the Dorga Shoon is done. Thieving 26. Ranged 13. We're making progress, guys. We're making progress. With Death to the Dog's Shoon done, we are on to Elemental Workshop Part 1, which I think will mostly be me having to click on stuff in the Elemental Workshop. You're trading with me. I will accept the trade of whatever we are trading. 200 Dragon Bones, 1,000 Monkey Nuts, and Ruined Herb Tea. That's actually exactly what I wanted. Thank you very much. I was just thinking, when is somebody going to give me a thousand monkey nuts? Thank you. It's very kind of you. Right, so Elemental Workshop 1 is next. And then actually, after doing Elemental Workshop, we need to train prayer from 32 to 37. Because right now my prayer is... Oh, it's 33 because I used some stuff on it. We need to go to... Where are we going to? We need to go to the Elemental Workshop. Where does that start? That starts in Sears Village. So Camelot and then walk. So tell you to Camelot. And then we'll walk to Sears Village. But I have been streaming for about two hours. So we're going to take a 10 minute break. Pop to the bathroom. Grab a bite to eat. Grab a drink. Stretch your legs for a bit. I would say get some sun, but it is raining here. So let's take a 10 minute break. When we come back, I shall carry on. 10 minute break, ladies and gents. I will see you beautiful people in 10 minutes time. It's time to touch some grass. Done. You know what? Let's just start now. No, we have five minutes left. Hang on. Because I said ten minutes. Which means some people may have actually took that to mean that they've got a full ten minutes. And I make it three minutes and fifty-six seconds remaining. So, to give those people an adequate amount of time to actually leave, do what they need to do and then come back. I'm just going to stare at you for the next three minutes.
Some of you in the chat are asking me if I'm going to blink. When you become a streamer, one of the rules is you accept crispy eyeballs. Ten seconds. Okay, cool. Let's get back to the stream. I hope you all had a good time. Uh, Sprite, I'm going to follow you. Could you please lead me to the marked bookcase in Sears Village? But before we do that... I will need access to a couple of bits of equipment. I will need... Uh, in fact, we should bank first. So let's go to the bank first. I'll run at the bank first of all. Thank you. I'm really glad that you uh, enjoy that. Was that good? Was that... I don't know why. Why is the camera still so big? You know what? Let's, let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it. When someone joins the stream, this is what they get. This is, this is who we are now. Let me just bang my nuts in the bank and then stick a bone in there as well. Grow up. Uh, my goodness, thank you for the 2,000 bits. That's from Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thanks, son. Appreciate it. Some of you have followed or subscribed while I was staring at you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That's remarkably kind of you. Let me stick these robes away. And I'll, I'll, keep, the, I'll keep the sharks on me. Now, I might have some of the required equipment in my bank. Now, I'm not... I'm lazy, but I'm not greedy. So let's just see if I can bank a couple of these things and get what I want. So, knife. Yes. Pickaxe. Uh, yes. Needle. Oh, I actually pretty much have all of the things that I might... Did someone give me everything I need for this? First time in stream. Love the videos, but thank you very much. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're having a lovely time. What we're going to be doing is playing some old school RuneScape, and I'm pretty much outsourcing the effort to completing a quest cape to all of you guys. So, I am gathering everything I need. Yeah, someone's given me exactly what I need to complete this quest specifically. And coal. Go with four coal. Exactly four coal. Yeah, one of you guys, you knew exactly what I was going to need for this. I, I think I do need to kill the rock elemental eventually, so I've got enough to do that. Right, I will follow Yandere. Yandere, could you please... Could you please lead me to the bookcase to the west? Streamer privileges content. Yes, this is uh, carry man mode, or lazy man mode as I'm calling it. You are carrying me through the entire game. I am outsourcing the effort to complete the quest. Quape, effectively, to you. That's my plan. Right, let's read the book. Let's start the Elemental Workshop quest. That's pretty much it. Use the knife on the book to cut it open. Use the battered key on the wall, and we are good to go. Here we go. It, it basically just it occurred to me that so many other RuneScape streamers were proving their mastery of the game by effectively... Um, limiting what they can and cannot do. But I am doing the opposite. Hiroth, thank you very much for joining me down here. You are going to be essential to working this out. So, first things first. Hiroth, can you please walk to the north? I need to turn the water controls. Don't worry, Hiroth, I'll tell you what to do. Now, there is a delay, of course, between um, you know, when I say something on stream and when you hear it and when you get to react to it. So it's okay. I don't expect the delay to be immediate. It's all right. We're okay with this. So we'll turn the water controls, and Myth, I'll follow you. Please lead me to the other water controls. There we go. Never went to Nights 1, without a doubt. I'm limiting what I will and will not do. Yeah, pretty much. I am I'm only making progress 
when somebody else progresses as well. Can we just take a second to admire the fashion scape? The serious fashion of a loan just here. That is beautiful. You look gorgeous. Okay, here off. I'm following you again. Could you please lead me to the, the lever in the middle? Hey, Josh, just joined. Your camera's a little small, isn't it? It is, but it's cold. All right? It's not the size that matters. It's how you use it. It's not the, the size of the boat. It's the motion of the ocean. Remember that. Okay? And it, it's, it's small. I've been swimming recently. It's just, just don't. Don't be, don't, don't be focusing on that. Let's focus on all the other stuff, shall we? Lazy Man Mode is trying to restore my faith in humanity. What I'm trying to do very much... Yandere, I'm following you. Can you please run to the east? I am... Your giant head blocked the fashion. You know what? That is a reason to make it smaller. We cannot be having badass fashion being blocked, without a doubt, because that fashion looked damn good. Have I played the Pathfinder video games? Not yet. I've been told they're good, but I haven't yet played them. Let me go and fix these bellows. So basically, we want to really be powering through this quest, because this is a long one otherwise. Darcy, please lead me to the west. Repair the bellows in the east room already done. Uh, now we're going to search the crate that I can do. Oh, pull the lever next to the bellows. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to follow... Let's go with... Bill, no, Ra, Ra's with us. Ra, can you please lead me back to the East Room? I need to pull a lever. Finally get to see a Josh stream, and the first thing I hear is, it's not the size of the boat, it's the motion of the ocean. Redbeard Flynn, good evening to you. Hopefully you're doing good. Now, Flynn has made some videos, and they've disagreed with me, which of course means that Flynn is now my mortal enemy, my, my nemesis, if you will, because he, he made a video titled, Is Josh Trifase Wrong? And I didn't even watch the video, I just thought, no. Straight away. Uh, no, Rip Flynn is a, a, a very talented content creator, and I would encourage everyone to go and watch the videos. Flynn, thank you for taking time to, to chill out, hang out with us, hopefully you're doing good. I would rather be on a pleasure cruise. YouTuber fight when? All the time. What you guys don't realise is that as soon as we stop streaming or making videos, YouTube, on it, it's like um, Thunderdome. That's all it is. There's just constant fights all the time. Oh, did you guys see that? Um, oh, there was a thing. Let me just use this ball on this. There was a thing on on Twitter and someone was making some Star Citizen content and they tweeted at a bigger Star Citizen streamer being like, hey, can I use... Um, some of your footage for some of the stuff that we're doing and creating. Mine one of the elemental rocks. Okay, cool. Uh, Darcy, I'll follow you. And the other streamer was like, no, this is my organization. This is my this. This is my that. You can't take this. Is <laughs> Someone says, wait, is there new content? No. No, we're just being very lazy. Let me attack the earth elemental and fight this thing. But no, they were like, no, you can't use that. Uh, you can't do that whatsoever. And someone actually said, I think it was the, the girl that was asked for footage, said, YouTube is a cutthroat business. No, it's not. Not at all. Rising tide rises all ships, as they say. The audience aren't going to watch one video and then no more for a... It's almost like, is he famous? No. No, not really. <laughs> it's a cult. No, not really. Uh, Darcy, I'll follow you. You can... The audience benefit if there's more people making more of the content that you like. If you can find content that you like, great. Watch everyone that makes content like that. No one has ever found content they like, then found other content they like and thought, ah, oh, shit, I can't watch that because somebody's already made content that I like. All right, great. I mean, MMO Byte contacted me and said, hey Josh, I want to make a series called Worst Gacha Ever, because you know, he knows more about gacha games than I do, and he just wanted to double check that I wouldn't consider that uh, infringing on my worst MMO ever thing, and I'm like, mate, do it. I would encourage you to do that. Kai, Kai Winter, the guy I was talking about earlier, Kai has started a series on YouTube called Worst Survival Game Ever. Great! More good content benefits the audience. Now, 
There may be, yeah. Ray, Ray's got a point there. Rhett's got a point. The idea that if you're just watching a playthrough, you might not need to watch multiple playthroughs. But I watch playthroughs of people playing Dark Souls for the first time. It doesn't even matter how many times I've played through Dark Souls. I will watch people play Dark Souls for the first time every time because I love seeing people's experience of my favourite game. It's totally okay if... I mean, you don't need to collaborate with someone. If someone says, hey, do you want to collaborate? It's okay to say no. You don't owe anyone your time. It's okay to say you don't want to work with someone. As they say, no is a complete sentence. You know, you haven't got to justify it. You can just say no. That's totally okay. By the way, we uh, we finished. Well, why is everyone here? Uh, don't tell them. So no is a complete sentence. You don't owe anyone your time. But when, if someone does approach you, you don't need to be, you don't need to treat YouTube as this massive competition. The audience is going to watch lots of stuff. Is it Dumb Ways to Kai? Yes, it is. Dumb Ways to Kai. Uh, yeah. Which Dark Souls is my favourite? I would say Dark Souls 1 has the, the interesting one for it. Dark Souls 2 is okay gameplay-wise, but feels more like a really good fan mod instead of an actual game. Dark Souls 3 was interesting. <laughs> Who was the famous one? We all are. You are. Yes, it's you. Can we all just follow Lyset? Yes. Hang on, I'm live on Twitch. Is Ly Lyset, are you streaming right now on Twitch as well? Can somebody please go and see if Lyset's also streaming? Lyset, now you're live on Twitch. This is your stream, mate. Let's do it. Lyset, where are we going? What are we doing? Leave me alone. Okay, we're not going to force someone to stream. If they do. What are your hobbies? Where are you? License amazing. We love you. Now, we're not going to bully someone on RuneScape. You know, one thing that is important that not a lot of people realize is when you are streaming, if someone follows you or if someone uh, raids you afterwards, it can actually be very intimidating to to suddenly have a huge audience thrust upon you. It's quite a scary thing to do. Goblin King, thank you very much for the tip. Remarkably kind of you. Now you've become the supreme overlord of Animist, given the game its record players and starting a cult. Excellent. So, you know what? I'm just another bony boy on Animist. That's the great thing. I'll accept a trade. I'm just another bone boy. You know, just another, another guy in the bone zone. Four bonds. That's actually remarkably useful. If you are sure, thank you very much. Raiding with a party of nine. Thank you very much. Welcome to the stream. If you have just raided on over, that is incredibly useful. So thank you. I am going to deposit those from my inventory into my pouch. And now we have lots of stuff and I'm going to be able to uh, going to be able to use that for the next one. Bonds are the one thing that are actually super useful in this. So thank you very, very much. Right, we have now done stuff. Uh, are you intimidated by suddenly having a massive audience? So, Alba, interesting way to put it. I've spent most of my life in the entertainment industry. I knew I wanted to be an actor from you know being a kid. I vividly remember being a kid and we had a, a VHS player, a VHS tape, and I had the VHS tapes of GoldenEye and Tomorrow Never Dies, the old James Bond films with Pierce Brosnan, the best Bond. People are always like, oh my god, the, the be who's the best one? The best Bond is whoever you grew up with. But there is a curse. There is... Flynn, my goodness, thank you very much for the donation. That's really kind of you. So there is a curse in the acting world that if you say you want to play James Bond, apparently you never will. That's just a... It's, it's a well-known kind of like superstition, if you will. Now, from when I was a kid... All I ever wanted to do was be an actor because I had those videos and I loved Goldeneye and I loved Tomorrow Never Dies and I would say to my mom, that's what I want to do. And she'd look at me so proud and she'd be like, I can't believe you want to be a spy. You want to join MI6? You want to work for the country? And I'm like, no, 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 you've, you've got me wrong here. I want to be an actor. And she went, oh, okay. And now thankfully she's always supported me. But I think it was a bit of a disappointment that it went from being like a spy to an actor. Anyway, when I was a kid, my dream was to play James Bond. That was my absolute dream. Will it ever happen? Probably not. Simply because James Bond is chosen years and years and years ahead of time, and you need to have been in a hell of a lot of stuff before you turn about 30 to 40 years old. It's unlikely I will ever be in the right room. It's unlikely I'll ever be casted in the right place or you know, able to find time to do TV, film, stuff like that. Chance of me playing James Bond? 
pretty bloody slim. Chance of Henry Cavill, let's hopefully make that even better, that'd be super cool. But I knew that I wanted to be an actor from a kid, so I did every stage show that my primary school, that my high school did. I even played Peter Pan. I know. So I've been there. I played Kaniki in Greece. I played Cool Hand Luke. We did all those cool things. I always wanted to be an actor. Without a doubt. <laughs> Gets four Bonds and suddenly starts ranting about James Bond. Yeah, depending on how many Bonds you give me, depends on the type of bondage that I talk about. Four is film bondage, so James Bond. But I always knew I wanted to do that. And I always push myself into those kind of entertainment positions. So now, yeah, there's there's 2,000 people hanging out with us. And that would normally be a an intimidating thing because 2,000 people, that's a, that's a theater audience, man. I would love to be able to walk out on stage and have 2,000 people in a theater audience and just entertain and chat. That'd be great. So it's not that it intimidates me. It's that I do feel the weight of responsibility to be entertaining. Thankfully, it's the one thing I think I'm somewhat good at. Everything else in life, no bloody idea. If Henry Cavill gets selected, what's my plan to sneak onto the set to replace him? If Henry, Here's my plan. If Henry Cavill gets selected to play James Bond, the way that I would replace him is when no one is looking, I would gently place boxes of custodies just leading to a big box propped up by a stick. I would have a, a rope tied around the stick, and when Henry just follows picking up all the boxes of custodies, let's be real, I could probably afford about three boxes of custodies, unless Kit come through with the 101 million deal, in which case I can probably afford about five or six, and then when he goes in the big box, pull the rope, stick goes, trap Henry, run on. And then they'll look over, and the director will be like, Henry, you've lost about six inches, and you're not as muscular. And I look over and be like, trick of the light, mate. You know, just positions you're standing in. Get me a box. I'll stand on that instead. That'd be worth it. We'll just do some CGI. I mean, you CGI'd a moustache in a previous film. I'm sure you can buff my muscles up a little bit. It'd be great. Right, everyone stop having fun. Back, yeah, movie magic. Back to focusing on work. Elemental workshop done. The next thing I need to do, legitimately, is train prayer from 32 to 37. How do we do... I need to gain 9,442 experience. How do we do this? Can use my altar. We can use Myth's altar. Myth, where is your house? I will do this. Someone's like, go to the Wildy. That'd be a terrible idea. Myth, where is your house? Rimmington. <laughs> Grow up. Grow up. Okay, Rimmington. Fastest way to Rimmington is... Just accept Bill Skates, teleport to Valador, to be honest. Yeah, we'll do that. Right, I need to go to the bank. Could one of you please lead me to the bank? Darcy, could you please walk me to the bank? I need to bank some stuff. What about starring as Austin Powers instead? Groovy, baby. I, I liked the Austin Powers films when I was a kid, and I don't know if I'd still like them, but I did find them funny. Would I return to... Well, I say return to, I was never successful at it, but would I go back to trying to do film and TV after, you know, all this time, if you will? I would like to. I think it'd be cool. But I don't know if I would have the free time around YouTube and Twitch. I've pretty much committed to YouTube now. So I've got all these dragon bones. Uh, let me... Darcy. Darcy, I'm following you. Could you please take me to Remington? Just got here. Good God, what an accent. Gotta love the Midlands accent. Thank you very much. Can't place the county, though. Ah, the Shire of Manchester. So, I've actually moved around a lot. Lazy Jorish. Get them noted in cash. Oh, that could work. I was just kind of hoping that you guys would just trade me a load of, uh, a load of bones, to be honest. See, Joris, my plan is if I go to someone's house, I'm hoping to get boned. That's my... It was too easy. I'm sorry, I let you down. That was too easy. You you knew that I was making a joke there. You knew that I was coming out with that. It's, I can do better. I will hold myself to a higher standard. And I, I will definitely, definitely hold myself to a higher standard. Right, so, Myth ran D-I-R. M-I-T-H ran D-I-R. Friends house. Myth ran D-I-R. Let's find out. Now we get to see Mithrando's house. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. It's a lovely, beautiful house. And Myth, I'm guessing, is going to light the the incense burners, and I'm just going to stand here and 
use bones on there. First stream here, and you're an entertainment pure juice. No wonder streams are short. Hey, here's the thing. I can probably only last for about two hours, and I can also stream for about two hours, because I just constantly talk. There's always stuff to do. Things are always happening. Sprite, I'm going to follow you. Anything else is just, it's too much effort. Use Dragon Bones on Alter. Oh, God, I've got a story for you guys. So, many years ago, I bought a purple party hat on what's now RuneScape 3. I paid 70 million for it. I sold that purple party hat for 90 million years ago. It's worth billions now, but I sold it for 90 million. I thought I was a, an absolute genius, you know, best business deal ever. I took that 90 million and I bought enough dragon bones to get 99 prayer. And you had to use every single dragon bone individually on the altar. And I remember this vividly because the day I got 99 prayer, the very day, they introduced a quality of life update that allowed you to use one bone from your inventory on the altar and it would then just use all of them. I remember that because it was just the fact that I got 99 prayer and they went, hey, quality of life update, and I'm just wearing the prayer cape. I'm like, fuck you, Jagex. You waited. You waited until I got 99 prayer. Was that my first 99? It was my first 99, actually, because I had for a while an untrimmed prayer cape. I was pretty, pretty impressed with myself. Yeah, thought it was kind of cool. All right, prayer level is now 36. I am going to need somebody to trade me. Hiroth is already ready to just throw the bone at me. Oh, man, you go to someone's house and they just bone you. It doesn't stop. The streamer lifestyle. Goodness me. All right, thank you, Hiroth, for trading me however much that was worth. Mod Ash has a vendetta against you. Look, I've spoke to Mod Ash. Not face to face. I've never been lucky enough to be in the presence of God. But I spoke to Mod Ash over um, Twitter, and he helped me out with a thing I did years ago where I worked on a, a RuneScape audio drama. And he was really nice, really kind. Like, he has got a lot of time for you. Prayer level is now 37. We can now use Protect from Magic. You know what? I'm going to use the rest of these dragon bones, uh, and then we go and do Ichthlarin's Little Helper. Is that how you pronounce it? Ichthlarin. Ichlarin. Ichlarin? Ichthlarin? Desert Quests. If you shift right click the bone, you can change it for left click. Josh, you need to slow down. This is efficient prayer training. Hey, it's lazy prayer training. I am just being as lazy as possible. I mean, when can we use Protect from Melee? You know, we should probably go for 43 to get Protect from Melee, shouldn't we? Should we just... Yeah, if we keep going for 43 to get Protect from Melee... That's probably a useful thing to do. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad that you enjoyed the audio drama. I very much enjoyed it. What tips do I have for a new old school RuneScape player? Mythic, it's very simple. Okay, it's very simple. All you need to do is have several hundred thousand YouTube subscribers and over a hundred thousand Twitch followers, and then make sure that hundreds of people come and give you everything you need. Very easy, very simple. It's all you need to do. It takes about five years worth of effort beforehand but one should do that, done. This, oh my god, this grass is not tiny trees. Oh, that's, oh goodness me, okay. This grass is not tiny trees. Okay, Myth, we have got the prayer that we need. We've got 37. We're probably going to get prayer experience from quests, which means we don't need to grind, which is good. Hey, love watching YouTube videos. I love watching you talk about how to better your speech. Oh, thank you. It, sometimes I fail at it. But hey, failure is just one step on the road to success, so you don't always need to be great at everything. Hello, Josh and chat. Hello, Rude. Hopefully you're doing good. Out of curiosity, do I smoke? I do not. I believe we need to go to Alcarid next. Alcarid for Ithlarin's Little Helper, the first in the Desert Quest series. There are a few enemies to fight. Oh, goodness me. Okay, there's actually quite a few. There's a Possessed Priest, level 91. And then one of the the random things that's... Ooh, okay, there's actually some serious combat going on here. I'm wondering if we should keep buffing up, because we're only level... Ah, we're only level 40... What was it? 44. We're going to need to... Oh, hang on, there's a genie. 
There is a genie. Talk to the genie. Yep. What would what do we use the lamp on? I mean, we're here for prayer right now, aren't we? We are here for prayer. We may as well do prayer. That's fine. 380 prayer experience. Boom. We leveled. Hunter. Hunter will be something we'll work on in the future. Let's go to our Karid. Now, we do need to kill a rather tough enemy in this quest, and I actually don't know if I'm going to be able to. They all use... So, magic, magic, melee, melee. Maybe protect from melee would be useful, to be fair. Maybe I really... You have train prayer from 38 to 40 and train it to later. Okay, cool. Can I safe spot these enemies? This isn't my first account, right? It is not. It is not. Lazy Joris, I'm following you, my friend. Let's do this. Uh, Joris, can we please head to... Where do we start this? Speak to the Wanderer in the camp west of the Agility Pyramid. That's going to need some desert robes. So could you please walk to the bank and we will grab some desert robes. I know. I know. The desert, the desert robes, it's awful. Need to try old school RuneScape someday. Not sure how I miss playing it. Hey, give it a go. Give it a go. Did Henry Cavill leave The Witcher? Uh, yes. So the ones that have been filmed already will obviously still exist, but I'm pretty sure he has left and it's being replaced by Liam Hemsworth. I haven't played Fantasy Star Online. Not yet. Not yet. It's on the list of stuff to play. How are you guys' first stream managed to catch? Well, hey, I'm, I try and stream as often as I can, and by that I mean once or twice a week. So it's not a lot, but I give it a go. Geralt from AliExpress. So we need some desert robes. Desert. 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 Let's just stick those on. All right, what else are we going to need for this? So, Ixlarin's little helper. We need a cat. I can get a cat. Uh, yep, withdraw. Oh, that's a cat mask. I need a cat or a kitten. I've got a toy cat. Do I have a kitten? I have a kitten. A kitten will work. Tinderbox. Let me just set up my, my stuff for what I need here. 600 coins or more for various payments. We'll take 6,000 just in case. A bag of salt or an empty bucket? I am going to need a bag of salt, please. I'm also going to take a bucket just in case. Willow logs and a bucket of sap. Is sap tradable? I also don't have any willow logs and water skins. So I might need some more water skins for somebody to trade me some stuff. Bring a few to avoid drinking it. Linen or 30 coins to buy some. Okay, so what we need now is a bucket of sap, which is non-tradable, and willow logs. You can get this by using a knife on an evergreen tree with a bucket in your inventory. So Ra is going to trade me, I'm going to guess, willow logs. That's perfect. I will need some water skins if somebody could provide that. That would be great. Has he done Anarchy Online? Not yet. Bring fish for the kitten. I will bring fish for the kitten. Everyone has disliked bombing the Witcher trailer. I'm sorry you're getting degraded to second monitor. I'm done eating now. I didn't even realise I was promoted beyond second monitor. I know my place. I know my position. All right? I'm not going to punch above my weight here. I'm not going to punch above my station. Bag of salt, linen, Nada teleport. That's actually all very useful. What I need now is access to an evergreen tree. Where is the nearest evergreen tree? Shouldn't evergreen... Are there some Falador? Okay, Darcy, let's grab me some teleport tablets while I'm here. I'm going to grab a couple of rocks, a couple of Falador's, a couple of Camelots, just in case. Uh, then we'll take some sharks, because it's always useful to have a little bit of healing, because I'm going to be involved in some fights. Some combat potions are always useful. And I know that I'm doing the whole meme build with, you know, wearing these things, but we may need to actually use some better armor, weapons, and equipment at some point. Thanks for all your Twitch and YouTube content. Helps me stay sane. Hey, while I stock groceries at work. Chaotic, I have also done uh, shelf stocking before as a job. I used to work retail, so there were some night shifts where it would just be endless shelf stocking. Shelf stacking when you've not got to deal with the public? Not a problem. Shelf stacking when you've got to deal with the public? Oh, God, kill me. But 
you are more than welcome for hopefully remaining at least slightly sane during the work hours. It's an important job. Thank you for doing it. I'm glad to finally see you on stream. Your last video was fantastic. Oh, thank you. The Animus video. Very much enjoyed that. Right, we need to go to Falador. I will teleport to Falador and we will find a a tree. Oh, I need a knife. Could could myth. Could you walk me to the bank, please? I need to find a knife or just have somebody trade me a knife. And then I need to use it on a tree. Oh, the retail memories. Can you go and check in the back for an item? Look, if you've not worked retail, allow me to explain what's in the back. Very little. Possibly some stock. That's about it. You know, when someone says, hey, can you check in the back for an item? And I go and check in the back. You know what I'm doing? I'm on my phone. I'm just sat there hoping that by the time I come back out, you've either gone away or, you know, you've decided to not be a dick when I, I tell you, no, we don't have it. Because I told you. I told you what's there. The back is just a broken toilet and a bad staff room. That's what it is. Don't be thinking it's some kind of mythical warehouse that we're hiding stock from you in. Okay. I've used everything. We need to talk to the Wanderer west of the Agility Pyramid. Does the Nada teleport get me to the Agility Pyramid? Will that work? Because Nada is south, isn't it? So the Agility Pyramid is there. And that's there. Okay, cool. Oh, Nada's there. All right, we'll teleport to Nada and I will... I'll need somebody else to meet me and run west into the desert. So I will teleport to Nada and I'll see you guys there. All right, cool. Myth there with us. Myth's always... Uh, myth's keeping me sane, keeping me safe. So the back room is just an empty room. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, but the website says it in stock. Thoughts on a question a friend asked me. Is it really a good game if the majority of the player base can only play with third-party tools, Runelite? Octo, that's, uh, that's an interesting way of putting it. First of all, I'm glad that Bill Skates is now a chicken. Is it a good game if you need a third-party client to make it good? What makes a good game changes over the years. And sometimes a game can be good, a game can be bad, and a player base can say what they do and don't enjoy about it. I mean, here's an interesting example. When people were doing player testing for the very, very first Grand Theft Auto game, there was not really a mechanic for being chased by the police. I mean, if you failed, the police would chase you and then you would just die and then you would carry on with the game. But it turns out that the early game playtesters spent more time running away from the police than they did playing the actual game. And so they decided to make the whole being chased by the police, an actual mechanic. And where I'm going with this is the player base will sometimes discover something they like about the game and hyper-focus in on that, even if you as a game designer didn't really intend it. RuneScape was designed as an MMO and the player base hyper-focused in on a couple of things. RuneLight was then released to facilitate the player's doing these things, focusing on them. Like the fact there's drop markers of stuff on the ground. That's not included in the base client. That was a thing added with RuneLight. Does that improve the game? Well, it definitely makes it easily accessible to everyone. Oh, by the way, guys, if you're in the desert with me, you're going to be taking damage unless you are drinking from water skins, so please make sure that you are. So does that make it a good or bad game? See, RuneLight definitely does a really interesting thing of facilitating the way players want to play. But if you make the way that you're playing the game way too easy, are you effectively removing the experience the game wanted you to have? Thank you for reminding me to stay hydrated. I've actually got some smart water right here. Not sponsored. I'm just drinking it so I become smarter. That's how it works. Smart water. Here we go again. Look, for those of you who have been here, you understand. Smart water is a brand of bottled water, literally called smart water. Not sponsored, but would be. Get on it, smart water. Send me some bottles. Um, and the reason I drink it is because it contains intelligence. And if I drink it, I get intelligenter, which means I then know more things. And there's lots of things I don't know. Like, I don't know lots of history. I don't know lots of geography. I don't know lots of maths. But somewhere in this water is that knowledge, you know? What I need is more not dumb. If I drink this, I'll get smart. That's how it works. Magic water, plus five intelligence, literally bottled intelligence. It is. It's maths. Each sip gives me wisdom. And the more I sip, the more wisdomous I get.
Okay, so I need you to understand that I I would find it difficult to actually um, explain the plot of this quest, even if I knew it really well. So I am not going to attempt to explain the plot of this quest, because this quest is complicated. Just go with me that this is the basic plot, okay? Just, just, I'm just work with me here. Just, just accept that I'm slowly going to be walking square by square through this pyramid. Follow the path until you reach a pit and jump over it. Move using the mini-map to avoid all traps. All right. Sweet. Don't need you yet. Just going to use the mini-map. Excellent. Use the mini-map just mitigates pretty much all the traps. What a fantastic thing to know and do. Beautiful. Absolutely brilliant. Why hasn't Kick offered me 10 million yet? Cowards. That's what they are. That's why they haven't. They're too scared. They're, they're way too scared to offer me all the money. Now, if I remember correctly, you actually do better if you... Yeah, I'm going to wait for him to not attack me. You do better if you wait for your run energy to be refilled. And if your run energy is higher, you are more likely to make this jump. That's what I remember. The question is, would I take it? Would I take 10 million pounds to stream on kick? Probably. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. 10 million pounds is... I could probably afford at least two Warhammer armies. Let's be real. All right. Josh is too smart to stream on kick. Well, if they offered me 10 million pounds, I could buy a lot of smart water. If if you were offered 10 million pounds and didn't do it. Yeah, think of all the, I could buy so much smart water. I could buy so much smart water with 10 million pounds that after drinking all of it, I might realize it was a bad idea. Or I might not. I don't know. Maybe I'll be doing my my philosophizing on a boat. Maybe I'll be doing it on a boat in a swimming pool on a bigger boat in the ocean. That's when you know you've won. I want to be relaxing on a lilo in a pool that's on the deck of a boat that's in a bigger pool on the deck of a bigger boat in my ocean. I'm going to buy an island. That's what I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy an island. Okay, I like the fact that myth is evil desert god hypnotizes you into doing bad things. It's the entire plot of the quest. It's the entire... In a pool of smart water. How many bottles of smart water would it take to fill up a swimming pool? I want to find out. I could buy other land. Don't tempt me. Some people... Sometimes companies do... I always like it because I get... Companies approach me, and some of them you can tell are legit. Some companies approach me with emails like, Hey Josh, we like your YouTube channel, would you please advertise this product? And I'm like, no, and they're like, okay, cool, thanks for your time. That's an absolute fine business interaction. My favourite emails, without a doubt, are, Hello, extreme Mr. Josh, we have business opportunity for you to be thinking about. We have lots of business opportunities in other countries, and we would like your business cooperation on these opportunities. And I'm reading the email and I'm thinking, this is a fucking business opportunity right here. I would be a fool if I didn't take it. They've got business opportunities in so many countries, so many companies, extreme. They will pay me very good, as they say. Yeah, many extremings, much content. <laughs> this, oh man, I'm going to be real. The amount of opportunities that I've missed. And if I hadn't drank all of the smart water, I would have taken them. Real Matt Case. What an honour. Matt, how are you doing, man? I know of you. Do you wear a tie when reading those business opportunities? I do, actually. I do. I only ever, I only read my emails when I sit down. I put on all my business attire that I've got from my business opportunities from various countries. Sit down, I open them, have a cup of tea, bottle of smart water. Matt K, in all seriousness, man, thank you very much for joining. It's lovely to have you here. I think I'll follow you on Twitter and watch all of your... Uh, all of your, all the tweets always give me a big smile. I do like you. Hopefully you're having a good day, man. For those of you uh, unaware, Matt is also a uh, bit of a RuneScape guy. 
I'll, uh, well, that's probably putting it lightly. But yeah, a bit of a RuneScape guy. That's what we'll say. But how are you doing, man? But no, I'm all good. I'm all good. Hopefully you're not melting in the heat. It is a uh, ridiculous, ridiculous temperature. I think the last time I checked, it's over 7,000 degrees over in the UK right now. Uh, although we had a crazy massive storm earlier. Matt K is the reason old school RuneScape exists today. Is that true? Like, I genuinely didn't know that. If that's true, that's really cool. Uh, hey, Josh, just came for your Elder Scrolls Online video. I wanted to ask if you still play it. So I've not managed to find time to play the Elder Scrolls Online in weeks, although it is one of my favorite MMOs to explore in. Uh, there's definitely a bit of um, contention when it comes to the combat, but exploration is fantastic. There was actually an event in London recently for the Necrom expansion pack for the Elder Scrolls Online. Um, that was uh, meant to have done pretty well. A friend of mine went there. Okay, let's just see if we can make this jump. We've got uh, we've got run on. Let's just see if we can. I've got no idea if we'll be able to. We've got maximum energy, and we made it! Oh my god. The first time I did this quest, I failed that jump so many times. Holy hell. I, you can fail that, can't you? I cannot believe that we legit made that first jump. I'm, I think you've got to make it again. I do think you've got to make it again. But this is good. This, this is a decent start. I'm happy with this. I don't know, isn't it weird that so many MMOs and so many games have done necromancy all at the same time? We had the necromancer in Diablo 4, we had the necromancer in RuneScape 3, and Necrom, which is the, with an M, not an N, Mike, not November, is from The Elder Scrolls Online. There seems to be a lot of, uh, a lot of necromancy-based stuff at the minute. Okay, now, I like this. This is good. I'm so good at puzzles. I'm just so fast at them. You know, it's... Did, did Guild Wars 2 have a necromancy-based thing as well? Why is it that every single person went, yes, we're going to do necromancy right now? You know what it reminds me of? And I thought this was weird. I didn't realise at the time that... Developing games takes years, and making films takes years. Did anyone think it was weird that Mist of Pandaria released so close to Kung Fu Panda. That was a weird serendipity kind of thing, wasn't it? That was like a really weird, specific thing to happen. Who planned that? Did someone plan that? Was there someone in the background of that? Like, Mr. Pandaria, the World of Warcraft expansion, and Kung Fu Panda, I'm sure, released really close to each other. And then Ants and A Bug's Life. That was a weird one as well. The fact that two almost identical films, although to be fair, that happens with films quite a lot because someone has an idea for a film and it gets spread around various uh, various studios and whatnot. Another one that I always found really weird about films being spread around was Despicable Me and Megamind released at almost the same time. And both of them were about the bad guy succeeding and they were, had a, a sidekick called... Minion, or Minions in the case of Despicable Me, but Minion was in Megamind as well. And this might just be my opinion, but of course it's my opinion, so it's objectively correct. Megamind is a better film. It just straight up is. Megamind is an absolute unsung gem of films. It's brilliant. It is so funny. Some of the lines, you know, you've got to leave, we're having the walls and ceiling removed when he planted the bomb. And he's like, you can't go in that room, it's too exciting. And then she falls into the room and it's like disco music, a disco ball happens and sharks with laser beams on their heads. And she pulls out, she's like, you're right, that was exciting. It's so, it's so silly. But I really think Megamind is an objectively good film. Like, watching it, there's always a smile on my face. I'm going to just spacebar through most of these quests, because if I don't, I am going to be here for ages. That's the truth. Opinion is not just the opinion of a man. It's the opinion of a man who's drank smart water. I'm not even sponsored. Why am I doing this? I should take the label off this. Kuma, if I drink this and I say something really dumb, I think they can sue me. That's the problem. Because if you drink smart water and then you get dumber, that's just proving that it doesn't work. If you take the label off, does it still make you smart? No. Because then it's just water. How many of you know the Do You Want to Moist story? 
You've probably seen it on the clip channel before. It's one of the more successful clips. If you haven't, I feel that I should tell you. Or it proves you have an allergy. Tim, thank you very much for the gifted subs. Remarkably kind of you. Some of you haven't. I feel I should share that story. It's one of the worst stories, but I'm going to share it with you. It's a good story. So I was back in uni when I was still chasing the acting dream. When I still had, you know, hopes, dreams, ambitions, aspirations, that kind of stuff. I was on a film set. It was a small student film set. And I was acting in a, a small capacity, but mostly I was just there as kind of a stagehand. I was just helping out. And the lead actor was over in the corner and they were preparing for a scene. And it was a very hot day. And I had, you know, bottles of water around me because we were trying to feed and water the crew. And I picked up this bottle and I looked over to the main actor. And what I wanted to say in my mind was, hey, dude, it's a very hot day. You know, things are dry as heck. Do you want a bottle of water? You know, hydrate yourself because I can see that, you know, there's no moisture here, man. Everything's crackly. Everything's dry. Do you want a bottle of water? But all of those words just mixed together in my head. And I picked it up and I looked at him and I stared and he looked back at me and stared. And we'd never spoke before. And I just went, do you want to moist? He didn't speak to me for the rest of the film. And the director saw me say this, and they heard me say this. And I'll never forget this. The director walked over to me, just looked at me, and they said, that was a train wreck from start to finish. And then they walked off. And I thought, you know what? You are right. Right, bring the following items. A cat. Let's just pick up the kitten. Talk to the... I think it wants some attention. It, Yes, there we go. Uh, talk to the, talk to the high priest in the southwest of Sophonim. Uh, Draconis, I'm going to follow you. Draconis, could you please walk me to the southwest of Sophonim? Oh, for those of you who are unaware, the two cities in RuneScape in the desert, Menaphos and Sophonim. Uh, hang on, Draconis, did I... So I stop following you. I know you're still there. I'll follow you. I'll follow alone. The two cities, Menaphos and Sophonem, are reverse words of each other. So, thank Just want to say thanks for all the wonderful content you've given me over the years. It's been quite the joy. You are more than welcome. There is, there is so much more content to come. I like to think that you've thanked me for all the wonderful content, but you very much dislike all of the bad content, because that would be fair. But yeah, Menaphos and Sophonem are just backwards. I think one of the letters is out, but if I bring up the, the world map, hang on. Yeah, so Sophonem Menaphos. The P and the H are switched around, but if you move the P and the H around, S-O-P-H-A-N-E-M. Sophonem Menaphos. See? There we go. <laughs> Matt's like, I never knew that. That's alright, Matt. I'll teach you about RuneScape. It's fine. <laughs> What else was uh, was random on RuneScape? The flames on the login screen are called the flames of login. It's actually thinking Matt is our thanks, buddy. If I try and log in tomorrow and I'm banned, that's why. Matt's like, oh, you joke and you jape, but no one shall make a fool of me. Oh, but no, it's... I think RuneScape is one of the games that definitely has the best kind of community interaction between players, Jagex and X Jagex, without a doubt. There is definitely a lot of uh, a lot of good, a lot of really good feelings there. Either way, I do hope you stay in the YouTube space. I definitely will. Like your MMO playlist to turn into my passive viewing. That's the plan. That is the plan. You're used to someone making a fool of me. Hey, Matt, you've able, you've been married for twenty two years. You're clearly doing something correct. Thank you for all your work. You're more than welcome. Oh man, COVID knocked everyone's on the on their ass for a bit, didn't it? Watched and rewatched all of your YouTube videos while a zombie. Excellent. I'm glad. That's the good. Chapter Master Valra. Why are all the celebrities are coming out today? Need more Warhammer gaming in here, please and thank you. Okay, well, Chapter Master, I am always literally right next to my hang on, let me just I've got obviously my calendar. There's nothing written on it because I have nothing actually planned to do, but I've always got my Warhammer calendar. Let me just see if there are any Imperial Fist. Thankfully, there aren't. That's good. Okay, there we go. Now it's just Ultramarines. Now we're better. Valrak, you know, don't get me wrong. I like you. 
I follow you on Twitter. I like your painting. I like all the stuff that you create, but one day you and me, we're going to sit down, we're going to play Warhammer, and you're going to be like, oh, damn. Damn, those Ultramarines got hands. Cannot believe you've done this. You know what's weird? I'll tell everyone in the chat something now. No matter who you who you follow or who you look up to or who you respect or who you admire, whether it's in the content creation or the art space, I do exactly the same thing. And when I meet people who I have uh, followed for a long time, whose artwork I admire, whose ethos I admire, or who you know just have, have produced content that I have you know enjoyed for a long time, there is always that fangirl inside you that screams, that never goes away. No matter how big you get, how successful you get, when you meet someone else who you have you know, admired or looked up to for a long time, there is always that there. People say to me, you know, oh, have you met these big YouTubers? And yeah, but I want you to know that when I was outwardly calm inside, man, I'm fangirling. When I first walked into the Jagex offices, this just massive smile on my face. I, I walked around and looked at all the artwork. I picked all the stuff off the wall, the cool you know, display LARP swords they've got. I was badass, man. That was really cool. And I've had people that I've you know watched for a long time walk up and say they've been nervous to meet me. And it's it's almost beautiful that everyone everyone has that mutual respect for the people that create, the people that have become successful. And I know that there are people that if I ever meet, I will be... If I ever get the chance to go and play Warhammer with the guys from Play on Tabletop, I will, without a shadow of a doubt. Straight away, I'll be over there. Um, Winter's SEO, that kind of stuff. Midwinter minis, yeah. I would love to go to Play on Tabletop. If I ever get the chance to play Magic the Gathering with uh, the professor from Tolarian Community College, without a doubt, I'll go over there. If I ever get the chance to work out with Will Tennyson, hell yeah, I'll be taking that. I would be, you know, in my element, in my absolute zone with that. Real Matt K, I got to meet Ian Livingston. I was too shy to say anything. Oh, Matt, that's okay. You were just deciding between your options. That's what it was. You were still deciding whether you were turning to the page where you talk or turning to the page where you die and run away. But if I ever do meet Ian Livingston, I'm going to sit down, stare at him and be like, Death Trap Dungeon. What the fuck, dude? That was hard, okay? That was difficult. I had to play that book like eight times before I finally got everything to kill that stupid dragon. Has anyone played the Death Trap Dungeon PlayStation 1 game? I swear to God. There are some games that are just Dark Souls before they were Dark Souls. Now, Nightmare Creatures is without a doubt one of them. The Death Trap Dungeon PlayStation 1 or PC game was bloody difficult it really was is this game solo friendly yes it is yeah i mean there's actually a um alone i'm gonna follow you could you please walk me to the pyramid that's currently to the east of us see runescape actually almost pioneered an actual in-game method of being solo called iron man mode where you cannot pick up items that have been dropped by another you can't trade with people you can't use the grand exchange there's a lot of limitations placed on it and many content creators far more talented than me have used Iron Man mode to prove their mastery of the game. I am doing the exact opposite and playing Lazy Man mode where people just give me everything. Like this, Myth has given me a stamina potion because he's tired that this quest is taking so long. So thank you very much. You are the most watched old school RuneScape YouTuber right now. The highest is currently a fake Boaty scammer. I'm so proud that I'm more popular than a fake Boaty scammer. That's all I've ever wanted to be. That is, that's a major thing. Magic potion. Thanks. I'll, I'll take a magic potion. Look, guys, if you're out in the desert and some random person walks up and gives you a fake magic potion, you take it. All right? You take it straight away. That's what you do. I'm glad you stream. I had a bad day and your stream makes me happy. That's what I wanted to be. That's really what I wanted to be. I just like sharing my love for the game, to be honest. It might be smart water. <laughs> That's what it is. So remember, uh, and Matt probably knows this, going through the temple is a dangerous thing to do unless you travel via clicking on the minimap. If you travel via clicking on the minimap, your character will automatically avoid every single trap in the pyramid. You'll step away from all the blocks and you'll step away from the uh, sand that you could fall into over there. See? Just entirely mitigate every mechanic. Let's prevent it. I didn't know that. Matt, we're just learning all the things today. Seriously, though, I would love to meet Ian Livingston. 
Very, very much. Ian Livingston and Steve Jackson, I would very much like to uh, to meet. Just, I, I admire their work ethic. I admire... I remember when I was a kid. Okay, so when I was a kid, there was a competition in my school. And the competition was, write a fighting fantasy novel. And if your novel is good enough, Ian Livingstone and Steve Jackson will visit your school and actually sit and talk to you about it. And I thought, I can do that. I've read Forest of Doom. So I sat down and I wrote the intro to an adventure. And then I wrote, do you want to go left or right? And then I just completely gave up. That's what it was. I thought, you know what? This is a lot of work. This is a lot of effort. This is not writing one story. This is writing like a hundred stories. I just couldn't do that. I think it's really hungry. So my cat's really hungry. Uh, I drink my stamina potion. I'll drink two of them and then I'll try and try the jump. I might fail this. If I fail this, we are going to need to run away. As you go to make the set jump, another sense of deja vu sweeps over you. Oh, okay. So we're back here now. Now we're back over here. Take Canopic Jar. And then I think we get attacked by someone. And then we attack the apparition. It's fine. Okay, can we put on my twisted... Yeah, put on my clothes. Remember, guys, never attack an apparition unclothed. Try picking up. You can kill them or safe spot. Feed a shark to the cat. Use shark on cat. Nothing interesting happens. I'm going to keep attacking the apparition. Drink super combat potion. Keep attacking. I am dressed, by the way, as a neckbeard in the game. That's why I'm wearing a fedora, a trench coat, and some shorts. As soon as we get the cargo trousers, our cosplay will be complete. Kill them, you can save spot them. I'm just going to keep fighting this dude until I kill it. I'm using Excalibur, by the way, because I just have not bothered to get any other item. I might not make this fight. This might genuinely be a fight that I fail. I might need to flinch him at some point. How's fashion in this game? Oh, fashion is the end game, as everyone knows. I am also running out of food very quickly. Is Slash better than Stab with Excalibur? I think it is. I might not have brought enough food for this. We might die. Spec. Oh yeah, I can use a special attack, can't I? For Camelot. Then keep attacking. Oh, eat a shark. Keep attacking. Does the special attack reduce the opponent's defense? I'm sure it does. Excalibur, is that a defense buff? Oh, it's a defense buff. I've got more defense now. So sharks heal 20 hit points. I might need to wait all the way until I'm actually fully drained of health. This is much closer than I want it to be, to be honest. This is much, much closer than I want it to be. Come on. Right, we're still buffed up with the combat potion, so we're okay. Someone get this man some prayer levels. I might need to get protect from melee. Okay, so that dies. Do I then take the canopic jar? Excellent. You take the burial jar. Fantastic. Now we can leave. Jump back over the pit with the jar. Done. You have the best gear in the game, though, well, clearly. Your super combat is better than Excalibur. Oh, does the super... Does Excalibur overwhelm the super combat effectively? It might do. Let me jump across the pit. I played the game 20 years ago. What a trip. It's still going. It is still going. Let's see if we can make the jump across the pit. I might fail. If I fail this, I failed. Bugger. Okay. So, wherever we are, we run this way. We'll try again. Don't worry, guys. We try again. We keep going. We keep going until I run out of food and or stamina. Food will be the thing I leave first. What clan chat am I in? I am in my own friend's chat. It's Lazy Strife. Because I am indeed a lazy player. Rip cat. Oh yeah, the cat's going to die, isn't it? That's fine. I can, I can get another cat. We're okay. Let's try the jump across the pit again. We've got 83% run energy. I'm sure your run energy affects your... For God's sake! God damn it, Matt! I know it's not Matt's fault, but he's in the chat, so we can blame him. Oh, that's such a Matt thing to do. It really is. Look, if the cat runs away, the cat runs away, you know? It, we're, we're very Ivan Drago on this. If he dies, he dies. Think it depends. The fake channel is like half a dozen fake boaty streams. Let's just stand here. We'll wait here for the... 
my run energy to recharge. The skeleton gets caught there. I can hang out here. Maybe it's what you're wearing. There we get 21 kilograms. I got 21 kilograms to go. 21 kilograms to flow. God, I've shown my age. Whatever happened to Blazing Squad? Now we're asking the real questions. That's what people care about. That's what people want. Everyone that's not from the UK is like, Josh, what are you on about? What are you on about? Who are Blazing Squad? All right, let me educate you, you uneducated people. Blazing Squad were one of the best rap groups for about a week. And then just everyone forgot about them. The 90s and the early 2000s had this really weird thing that someone was the big thing for like a week and then someone else came along. UK Garage Classic. It was a good week, though. Oh, man, when, when Blaze and Squad were out for that week, they had 21 seconds to go. Only 21 seconds to flow. My God, they did some good stuff in that 21 seconds. Hi, Josh. Couldn't you have a lot more viewers if you played a less niche or even crazier games? Less niche? Playing RuneScape. It's one of the biggest MMOs in the world. It's like... World of Warcraft, RuneScape, Final Fantasy XIV. They're like your top three. I mean, yeah, I understand that the MMO, niche, MMO genre itself is niche. But you know what? Let's just lead into it. Yeah, I'm playing this unknown indie game called RuneScape. No one's heard of it. What should I play instead? Should I play Fork Knife? That's what I should play. When you say that, what else would I go with? Because I'm not really a Fortnite kind of guy. I'm not really a, a Rocket League kind of guy. I'm not, I probably couldn't escape from Tarkov, even if I tried. Having 2,000 viewers playing RuneScape is huge. There's a couple of RuneScape streamers that managed to pull this consistently. I mean, Boaty's the big one. He pulls it all the time. That dude is a RuneScape machine. Uh, he is incredibly skilled and talented at the game. You've got some old school guys that are absolutely massive that uh, do incredibly well. The only reason, by the way, that I am waiting is so my... Uh, stamp my run energy recharges because I am absolutely convinced that if you have more run energy, you are more likely to make this jump. I don't know where that came from, but I am pretty sure that's something that you need to do. Right, so we, we very much need to jump again. I'm going to wait for this to get to 100, see what happens. Have a try Dungeon Fighter Online. Big run energy, low cat HP. Can the cat actually run away? That's a problem. Like, if the cat runs away, that might legit genuinely be a problem. Right. God damn this game! Okay, so we need to get some... Hang on. I need to get some cat food. Let's teleport to Camelot. Could somebody please bring me some cat food? Ideally, a tiny fish. I have teleported to Camelot. Could somebody please bring me something the cat can eat. You can feed the shark to a cat. Use shark on cat. Nothing interesting happens. Cat can't escape if it's in your inventory. It won't while it's in the inventory. Oh, do you need to put the cat on the ground? Hang on. Cat. Drop pet kitten. Right click. Um, use shark with kitten. Ah, right, cool. Kitten gobbles up the shark. To be fair, I am now also out of shark. So, got the cat. Pick up kitten. Draconis, could you please lead me to a bank? And then I'll need to go back to the desert and try again. That's fine. You can't make the jump because you haven't been to the gym. Okay, you don't need to call me out like that. All right? It's been hot the last couple of days. I haven't wanted to walk there. We, we dine well here in Camelot. We eat ham and jam and spam a lot. We sing from the diaphragmalot. Yes. All right, let me back some more stuff. All right, what do we need? Um, we probably need some more stamina pots, so we'll take two more of those. Uh, I've got water skins, that's fine. Put the Falador teleports away, take more of them. Uh, I need some more sharks, without a doubt. How heavy are the sharks, actually? Because that's what's... It's 25 kilograms, man. I probably need to carry some... Some lighter stuff with me. What's the heaviest thing I've got on me right now? Sharks weigh very little. Knife weighs very little. Logs are weighing two. The bruise. 
Oh, they're, they're fine. We'll take those. Um, oh, where were the stamina pots? Stamina potion. There we go. Cool. Oh, got you already. Stick them up there so I can see them. Hang on. Let's just move them around. Does anyone have any Narda teleports? I might do. I do not. But I'll take another shark because I truly do believe that sharks are going to help me get through this. Without sharks, I'm going to die. Straight up. I also need some inventory space. Hang on, this is it's so complicated. My goodness, playing RuneScape, remarkably complicated. Let's trade with Chob. Always accept a trade from a man named Chob. On second thoughts, let's not go to Camelot. It is a silly place. I don't think the coins have weight. No, they don't. Uh, Sprite, I'll trade with you, Sprite. I need a nut. 30 Ah, su oh, Summer Pies Agility. Okay, cool. I'll take 30 Summer Pies. Thank you very much. That's remarkably kind of you. That is actually potentially something very, very useful. Let's bank the Summer Pies. Take one with me. That is more agility. Uh, what else do we need? Okay, I think we're good. There's cups of tea all over the bank, as there should be. I went to a restaurant once, they had run out of shark. Had they genuinely run out of shark at the restaurant? How dare they? Right, I need to get to the Nada thing again. All right. Fastest way to get there? Anyone got a, a Nada teleport? I mean, I can just wait here till someone passes me one, that's fine. In a real rush. We'll wait for a Nada teleport. Uh, sprite trading again. Uh, oh, five Nada teleports. That's great. Thank you very much. You have never eaten shark. I had swordfish once. Swordfish, by the way, genuinely tastes almost exactly like tuna. Just like really dense tuna. Now, I've only got a water skip. I've got four water skips. That's fine. Right, Nada teleport. Could somebody please teleport to Nada? Chob's already there. Chob, I'm following you with your max cape. Could you please walk me across the desert? You've even got the Pharaoh's staff. This is your this is your full-on Moses moment right here, man. Leading us all across the desert. I am also aware, people need to be aware of this. As the quests get harder, the amount of people who are going to be able to follow me into the quest gets less. And the problem with that, it's, it is off to work. The problem with that is I know that by the time we get to like Song of the Elves, Dragon Slayer 2, you know, all the really tough quests, we're probably going to have like four or five of the hardcore elite pushing through with us. Once you hit end game, I've got you with Song of the Elves. Yeah, I'm going to need like the, the real elite, the real elite to get through with the hardcore quest. That's going to be the hard one. Is this account only allowed to follow other players? Ah, so here's how it works. I am basically trying to get a quest cape, but I'm trying to do as little work as possible. Enter rock. Okay, is... Yep, cool. That takes me to the city. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to run away from being attacked because I'm being attacked by locusts right now. But then I'm going to follow... I'm going to follow Darcy. Yes, I am trying to do as little work as possible. I am not... Welcome back. Thank you very much, Olive. I am not grinding enemies. I am just being given things. I am uh, not walking anywhere. I am following people. And I am using the map right now to effectively mitigate all of these traps because that's a thing that happens when you do that on the map. Drink a stamina before running. Already done, my friend. One step ahead of you. This is the ultimate leech gameplay. Yeah, without a doubt. This is leech man mode here. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm effectively trying to community outsource a quest cape. I want to be able to... This is the plan. And I've said this before. This is what will genuinely happen. If we can get a quest cape on this lazy man account, I will commission a cosplay artist to make an actual quest cape, and then I will embroider, or I will have someone else embroider using a machine, ideally, everyone's name, because I've got the, the friends list here, everyone's name on that quest cape. And then I will see if I can present the quest cape to Jagex or something. That would be cool. Do I think Jagex will give us all a quest cape? No, I think we will have a commemorative community quest cape. Because this is a community effectively 
carrying me to to a quest. Jump across the pit, let's try it again. This is time number four. Will we succeed? We we will! Oh, there we go. The summer pie. Why did I go ha ha after getting it like I'm some kind of British naval captain? <laughs> we made the jump! Ha ha! I see, fantastic. Pick up the kitten. I can't believe you've not been in my inventory the entire time. My goodness. Huzzah! We've made it. Huzzah indeed. Right, open the door. In we go. Let's just solve this quiz. So good at puzzles. Laughs in colonial British. Let's use the canopic jar. Just drop it over here, to be fair. Can I put my actual clothes back on? Drop canopic jar. You return the burial jar. Right. Returned. Leave the pyramid and return to the high priest. Thankfully, you can actually just do this by failing the jump anyway. Adventure does await. That was like a genuine British huzzah afterwards. God, even if I try, I can't suppress the colonialism. I, just, I can't. I mean, I'm in the desert, to be fair. My, my colonial British ancestry is showing through. I am super tempted to put on a pith hat and explore and go and conquer. It's, just, it's an innate desire that we all have, and we can't hide it. It's just how we all feel deep down. I mean, we were talking about Zulu earlier, so it all comes. <laughs> I'm going to take a flag. That's very Eddie Izzard of you. Thank you. How will I deal with solo instanced encounters? Look, so if there's absolutely no way that I can outsource the effort, I will put the effort in. If I can outsource the effort in essentially any way, I will outsource the effort. Now, I've got a couple of friends that work at Jagex, and I've asked if they would be willing to log in to a Jmod account and then join me in a player instance to help? And some of them have said yes. Uh, Darcy, will you please follow me? Hang on. Who's asking? It's a hangout spot, cozy place, in it? Yeah, we're just chilling. I see. Wait, no. Say OSS. Yes. He is chilling out with us. Maybe he's... Look at that badass in Gothic's trimmed armor right there. Guy looks cool. Could you please walk me to the high priest and soften him? Oh, I like this. I like community. Community sourcing effort. You just need to loot everything and putting it in a museum. The British Museum, the world's biggest loot chest. All right, cool. I've returned the jar. We've all sorted. Ceremonies happened. God, this is a long quest. Who designed this? RuneScape seems like a chill-friendly game, but it's actually a genocide simulator. Very true. You do commit a lot of crimes while going through the RuneScape life. You definitely do. Well, the... Okay, the thing has magical seals, lots of problems, lots of challenges. The desert quests are actually quite difficult. Tricky Cow finally caught a stream. Every time someone says that, I'm always tempted to end the stream. I'm not going to. That'd be a dick move. But I'm always tempted. Like people are like, oh my god, I'm finally here. Okay, cool, bye. Talk to the embalmer just south of the high priest. Uh, I will follow Yandere. Yandere, could you please walk me to the embalmer? Yandere, I'm liking the uh, the fashion you've got going on, by the way. Very vampiric goth, and I like that. You did last week. I did last week, didn't I? Sometimes I let the intrusive thoughts win. With RS Quest, 25% chance you're being tricked by the bad guy. Yeah, pretty much. The embalmer, that's the one. Need someone to walk me to the embalmer. And now we push through... And I give the embalmer everything we need. We've given them... That was unexpected. We had all the stuff on us already. Fantastic. Also, thank you. I did quest for it. It looks cool. I'm going to follow Yandere. I will continue to follow you. Yandere, could you please walk me to the carpenter in the east of Sofenem? And we need to get the holy symbol. Yandere, you forgot me. I'm, I'm over here now. I'm not going to leave. It's okay. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you to understand. It's all right, Yandre. I, I, I trusted you. I had faith in you and you abandoned me. It's all right. Abandonment issues. It's okay. It's okay. Give the embalmer the cat. Hey, what they do in their free time is up to them. Ah, it's raining again. Thank God. The UK seriously has been hotter than the sun for a short amount of time. The embalmer 
is to the south of where we currently are. No, sorry, the carpenter, not the embalmer, the carpenter. I need to talk to the carpenter, whom is to the south. Sorry, Yandra, I've got faith in you. Is the OSRS community as degenerate as other MMORPGs? You know what, as silly as it sounds, the old school RuneScape community, I genuinely think, are not only slightly older and slightly more mature, but weirdly, much more attractive. You guys find that? Almost everyone that plays old school RuneScape is, like, good looking. It's strange. I don't know why, but it's almost one of the most you know, socially acceptable MMO RPGs. It's, it's very strange. Thank you. As someone who plays old school RuneScape, I agree with that. Yeah, straight away. M Matt Case here can confirm. The guy's got a wife, all right? He's been married. The dude finished the game and found a follower. Yeah, he's done well. Proof. Okay, cool. So this dude is uh, giving me some willow logs. There are the willow logs. He takes some time. We do some stuff. We get the holy symbol. Now we need a cat. But I would say that Old School RuneScape definitely has a, a slightly more mature community. Now, of course, the PvP community, as with any MMORPG that has PvP, is awful. But that's not RuneScape's fault. That's PvP's fault in general. Okay, can we please return enter the pyramid south of Sophenem with a cat again? Yes, we do. How much did he buy his girlfriend for once he completed the game? Uh, the usual price, 10k. Price everyone pays. Hey, cat, open this door, please. In fact, unfortunately, inflation has risen and the price of a girlfriend is now about 15k. Uh, but that's just... That's just the price you pay. All right, back. We have to make this jump again. Do you have short-sleeved button-downs when it gets hot? Nope, there's a long sleeve button-downs all the way. I'll tell you why I don't own any short sleeve button-down shirts. I do not think they look good. I think that if you want to own a button-down shirt, buy a long sleeve shirt, roll the sleeves up. It is very difficult to look sexy in a short sleeve button-down shirt. It is very easy to look sexy in a long sleeved rolled up button-down shirt. And this is because sex appeal is all about the inclusion of sleeves. That's what it is. Dimitri Martin put it best in one of his stand-ups. Leather jacket? Cool. Leather vest? Not cool. Therefore, cool is leather sleeves. That's how it works. But uh, in all seriousness, the uh, if you're going to go for fashion, guys, seriously, you will look so much better if you have a long sleeve shirt and you just roll the sleeves up. Without a doubt. I mean, you could just cut the sleeves off and wear the sleeves alone. That would work. That proven to work, without a doubt. Must be why vinyl's making a come. Yeah, yeah, see? Long sleeves, because that... Ladies and gentlemen, Matt K making a joke in my chat. It's a good day. It's a good day. Okay, we have to fight some more stuff, don't we? So, use unholy symbol on a sarcophagus and then I think we have to fight things and I'm going to drink my super combat potion right now the mistress can enter the pyramid oh that's a problem well, that truly is a problem right we need to warm them oh god I've got to make the jump again haven't I if I keep failing this jump I swear to god oh thank god okay let's pop over here now we need to fight what do we need to kill? Kill the possessed priest, pray, protect from magic against the priest. Open the door, kill the possessed priest, pray, protect from magic. The wanderer is here! Oh yeah, this is some kind of, um... It's the, what's, the, it's the Majarat, isn't it? The Majarat kind of thing. Hello from Scotland! Jimmy, how you doing today? Hopefully you're having a lovely day, welcome to the stream. You join us as we play some lazy man runescape mode. Allow me to attack the possessed priest. Pray, protect from magic. I have not brought any prayer potions, which very much means I might need to prayer flick this. Okay, hang on. I did uh, absolutely not. Give me a second. Give 
Give me a moment. I'm trying to focus on the rhythm of prayer flicking here. I know that normally it means just turn it on slightly before the attack roll is done and turn it off after the attack roll. And I'm trying to remember when the attack roll happens compared to when it doesn't happen. But if your prayer is on when the attack roll is made, you're okay. If your prayer is off when the attack roll is made, you're okay. You've got to make sure the prayer is on, but it doesn't remain on for longer than a tick. Now, this is way more effort than I wanted to put into this, to be honest. Don't you need to kill all four of them? Yeah, I'm pretty much trying to make sure that the prayer is on when the attack roll happens. It does feel a bit against lazy man mode, without a doubt. Without a doubt. It's much more effort than I wanted to do. Click twice, then twice again. Hang on. I might just leave it on now. We've, we've got him down enough. We're okay. We're good. We're fine now. Any thoughts on 10th? I've not played enough 10th edition to know. Lazy man's worst enemy. Actually having to play the game. Take the defense potion. Oh, guys, we've got a drop. Uh, high priest. Hey, let's chat to you about the stuff. Stuff and things. Going out and getting more pots would be more effort. It would be more effort. I'm too lazy to bank. Being lazy is a lot of effort. In the famous words of Ron Swanson, I would work all night if it meant nothing got done. I will put a hell of a lot of effort into doing nothing. Why is my cam in the center of the screen? This is frustrating. It's not. It's at the bottom of the screen. Now it's in the center of the screen. But now it's going to continue in the center of the screen. Leave the pyramid and witness a cutscene at the end. Okay, cool. We can do that. A sense of deja vu sweeps over you. Yeah, we're going back to... Ah, oh, Ixlarin. Ixlarin, there's some kind of god going on outside. Dying with the sphinxes, we're back out. Uh, Cody, I'm going to follow you, Cody. Cody, could you please walk me to the high priest in the southwest of, of wherever we currently are? The southwest of the desert place where we are. Your cam is also too big. Not a problem. You know what I can do? I can do this. I am now an inventory item. There we go. I will just make sure that I never use that specific spot in the inventory. Mukluk is raiding with 154. Nobody explained the camera. Mugluck, good evening to everyone from Mug Streams. Hopefully you uh, guys are all doing good. Welcome to the stream. Let me uh, explain for any one of you uh, who has not been here before. My name is Josh. I play old school RuneScape mostly with a general MMORPG edge. Right now, we are playing something that I'm calling Lazy Man Mode. We have finished Ixlarin's Little Helper. Oh, thank God we've actually managed to do it. That was a bloody long quest, wasn't it? We have got 97 quest points, by the way. That is... Very, very impressive for the amount of time we've played this for. If you're wondering where the camera is, just check the inventory. I'm in there. So we've uh, finished the quest. What is next on our quest list? I legit didn't think we'd get this far. So but the next quest is the Golem. Now, the Golem is a short quest. Talk to the Clay Golem in the ruins of Uzur east of Shanty Pass in the desert. Thank you for the alpha male video, Morth Chokes. Oh, thank you very much. So a lot of people looked at the alpha male and a lot of the, the newer comments are like, what a beta thing to say. And some people did correctly call out that I said, you should be the kind of guy that everyone wants to invite to the party. That's not entirely true because everyone would imply that, you know, horrible, bigoted narcissists want to invite you to a party. You don't want those people inviting you. You want people that you care about, people that are genuine, people that are friendly, people that are nice, that are amicable. You want you want to be the kind of people that you like inviting you around the place. It is, it is difficult and it's scary. And I think, again, a lot of young guys do latch on to that whole alpha mentality because they want to feel that they're strong and involved and powerful. And it's, it's scary to be alone. That's what it is, without a doubt. Oh, there's the camera. I was confused. The camera is in the inventory. That's where the camera is currently. If you look in the inventory of the actual game, you'll see the camera. I would argue that you do want the whole big people to invite you because then it gives the pleasure of saying no. Check your inventory. Oh, yeah, we've got a... a hang on, there's a Catsby amulet. I like it. I can wear the Catsby amulet, can't I? 
Right, we've also leveled up a couple of skills. I just, hang on, time to drink some smart water, get smart again. Hey, itty bitty Josh, it's not the size that matters. Right click, drop, drop myself. Not gonna drop myself, guys, am I? Okay, what do we do next? Next up, we are doing the golem. All right, the golem, what do we require? We require soft clay, vial, pestle and mortar, papyrus, possibly some teleports. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take a five-minute break and pop to the bathroom. Josh, camera is too small. Not a problem. I can fix that. Give me a second. Done. You guys don't need an inventory. I'll just sit here, shall I? This is my new spot. This is where I stream from from now on. In fact... I was going to move the camera because right now the, the arm of the mic is kind of hanging over the red of the health bar. But you know what? No, it's worse that it doesn't make sense. So I'm not going to change it. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Five minute break, pop to the bathroom, grab a bite to eat, wander around, stretch your legs, and I'll see you guys in five minutes. And then we shall continue playing some more RuneScape. Set a timer for, I actually set it for six minutes. Don't tell anyone. But uh, that's what I do, just be a bit cheeky. I'll see you beautiful people in five minutes' time. I actually managed to make a cup of tea in that time. Genius. That's what I am. Fast. God damn. Tell you what. See, nice and hot and wet and it only took me five minutes. No, too easy. Too simple a pun. Don't laugh at it. Don't applaud it. We can do better. I'm going to do much better for you. Mm. There we go. Beautiful. Don't laugh at it. I said don't. The one thing I said, oh goodness me, you can't listen to instructions. It's just the one thing I asked. Okay, here we're going to go. What are we going to do? We're going to do the uh, the golem quest next. The golem quest requires me to be. Chob wishes to trade with me. Chob, I have... Josh, am I not on the friends list after four bonds? Solo, you're on the friends list right now. Chob, I can see that you've got all the stuff we need for this quest. You know what? Have some sharks. There you go. I need some inventory space. You can have some sharks. Chat listening to instructions. Sometimes they do. The one thing this chat can do is 50-50 a poll. I wonder if over 2,000 of you could. Bet you couldn't. You know what? Not even to the number, but to the percentage this time. The per that's easier, okay? Can you do this? Yes. Yes. Again. No, no, I'll put no. Yes. No. If chat 50-50 is this poll... 50%. 50%. I'll just end the stream. There you go. That's the, that's the rule. If you guys can 50-50, we'll take it. Uh, Tilty Terror wishes to trade. Tilty Terror, what are we trading? I'll take a trade. If you can 50-50, I will just immediately end the stream. That's what will happen. You are tired of me taking too long to do anything, so you've got an absolute ton of stamina potions. I appreciate that. That's not allowed. That wasn't the deal. Report the poll. <laughs> be like, no, quick, stop it. You won't do it. You won't be able to do it. Okay, fine. To the number. You won't be able to. Uh, I've got to, have to give you a, a, an empty vial. Just to give myself four spots. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to take all those. But thank you. That's remarkably kind of you. The poll is unstoppable. If you get it to the number, everyone vote yes. Everyone do it. We're not locked. We're not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with us. I am. I very much am. Okay, cool. Let's do this. So, stuff on 51%. No. Oh, damn, that was close. 146 to 141. I like how there are 2,000 people here, but as soon as people realize that I might end the stream, they're like, nope, we ain't doing it. It's not happening. Sandwich delivery. Talk to the sandwich lady. Oh, that's for a group Iron Man. Right, where are we going? So, I need dig site teleport. Uh, no, I don't. Where do I start this? Talk to the golem in Uzur. Well, what's the fastest way to get to Uzur, guys? Fastest way to Uzur? I'm gonna need, uh, 
Gonna need someone to tell me here. This is some proper third monitor content, thank you. That's what I go for. You'd have to be on the main monitor to get them to vote. I know they wouldn't. Uh, the carpet. Yeah, I can take the glory to Al Karid. That's a good point. Uh, glory to Al Karid. Done. I have gloried to Al Karid. However, it's uh, an amulet of glory trimmed, which puts me in this beautiful thing. I don't have the Uzur carpet. That's okay. I will follow Major Size Guy. Major Size Guy, you and your boot head are now leading. Off we pop. How much gamer skills do you get from the chair? All of them, actually. If I try and uh, play off the X rocker not sponsored chair, then uh, I'm not very good at games. That's true. As soon as I play off this, all my gamer skills go. Mmm. I do love cups of tea from a Jagex mug. You should make speedrunning the bouncer a sub goal. I don't hate myself or you that much. I find gamer chairs to be less comfortable than office chairs. Okay, can we just take a point? I've, I've mentioned this before, but it's very, very true. If a piece of furniture is advertised to gamers, it's bad. Just, you can have, just if you really want a comfy office chair, you can just have a comfy office chair. Now, I'm sure that there are going to be people out there who are like, Josh, you can't say that. You're friends with people who run businesses aimed toward gamers. Yes, I am. And they're lovely people. And the stuff they make is of decent quality. However, if you are going to be sitting in a chair for a long time, your gamer skills really should come second to your comfort, your back support, your lumbar support, all that kind of stuff. You know, the arms that have got going on as well. Find yourself an actual nice, comfortable office chair first, and then game in it. I mean, you don't see people taking a comfortable office chair, taking a gamer chair like this to go and do spreadsheets. Bro, you got arms on the gamer chair. I thought you meant like, do I, do I have the guns? No, obviously, because in England, you'd need a license for these. Uh, my gamer chair has kept my ass comfy for 10 hours a day. You, look, you've got to have a good chair. You've got to have a good chair. I mean, I can't afford a Herman Miller. I'm not made of money. But maybe one day I need a shanty pass to get me through the shanty pass itself. Deposit a water skin. Take out a shanty pass. Uh, let's do this. Go through shanty pass. Here we go. Proceed regardless. Let's do this. I'm going to follow stupid Olive, who seems to be wearing the, I'm guessing, desert robes or slave robes, possibly. Let's go. Here we go. Desert Olive. Let's do this. Stupid Olive, let's do this. Walk me to Uzur, please. I am on my way. That bank layout makes me weep. Look, since Jagex put a search function in the game, you don't need to organize your bank. Organizing your bank is for people that don't want to search for things. And I'm fine searching for things. Captain Cody's like, later, nerds. I'm going to take this, uh, this carpet, just fly straight over there. He's being cool. So one of you is being attacked by a, an, a a thing as well. So you guys also make sure you got water skins on you, because if you die and drop some very expensive gear, I would not forgive myself. I'd laugh at you, don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't forgive. A refurbished Herman Miller is fairly affordable. I'll take that. Ooh, discounts from a chair. I'd laugh at you too. Good, I would expect you to. So we're uh, we're walking across the desert. This is very, very biblical right now, isn't it? Stupid Olive, you are leading us into this desert. 40 days, 40 nights kind of thing. Off we pop. I've seen this film. Is there a clan or a clan chat? There is a friends chat. Friends chat of Lazy Strife. You guys want to join that? You're more than welcome to. You don't need to, but you can Opinions on buying versus renting a house. Now, I know that's what you all come here for. I know this might be a RuneScape stream, an old school RuneScape stream, but I know most of you are sat there thinking, please, Josh, please tell us your opinions on the economic viability of buying versus renting a house. And thank God that you've asked and you've all come here because I've got opinions. I've got thoughts and feelings, and I very much need you to understand First of all, this is going to sound awful. It's okay to rent if that's what you can afford 
And that's what suits your lifestyle. Because I've met so many people and they're like, oh my God, you should never, ever, ever rent. Okay, look, it sounds great. Buy a house, get a mortgage. Super easy to do, I'm sure. Banks are just throwing mortgages at people, aren't they? But sometimes what you want to do is have a life that involves traveling around more. Sometimes you don't want to be financially responsible for a house. I'm not saying responsible in general, but you don't want that asset. Sometimes renting suits your lifestyle. And some people will say to you, oh, you know, it's uh, it, it's dead money. You're throwing money away. OK, yeah, I get that there is an argument there. But if you are renting, whether it's a room, a house, a place, wherever, because I've rented a single room in a bedsit before because it's what I needed at the time. I was traveling around, didn't have a lot of stuff. If that's what works for you at the time, that's what works. I think that it's it's great to be able to say, yeah, just save up and buy a house. But a lot of people aren't going to be able to do that because it's very difficult to save up and buy a house. You know when our parents used to say to us, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about? And what we thought they meant was that they would hit us. And what they actually meant was they would slowly destroy the economy. Play in the long game. Respect that. You know, they were like, oh, you know, your your generation had it so easy. What we're going to do is just slowly destroy the housing market. Ah, fair. Well played there. Well played, boomers. Didn't see that coming. Didn't see that coming. I thought you were going to do the Zerg rush. You actually went with the slow Protoss turtle. Good strategy. No coming back from that. But look, if you could own a house, great. Try and own a house. It's a bloody difficult thing to do. We grab this letter. It's very hard to do, but uh, it would be excellent if everyone could own a house. That would just be absolutely bloody fantastic, wouldn't it? I'm going to... Uh, Zaj, you stole my letter. Sorry. Um, Darcy, did I legit steal your letter? Are you doing the quest as well? And I actually took it. Hang on. Is, is the letter in this quest... An item in the... It is! It's an item in the overworld! It's a quest item that's shared. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Um, Olive, I'm going to follow you. Olive, could you please walk me to the staircase down? But no, in all seriousness, it would be absolutely incredible if everyone could own a house. That'd be great. It's difficult to save up the money required to put the down payment on a house. It's, it's remarkably difficult. I understand the complexity and the difficulty of this. Leeches, I'm following you now. Leeches, could you please pick up the strange implement in the northwest corner of the ruin? Leeches, could you please walk me to the northwest corner of the ruin so I can pick up the strange implement over there? That'd be great. Any chance on Diablo 1 or 2 to count? Uh, was it good? Yes. But one thing that you'll realize is that I'm very bad at cashing in on hype. Like, really bad, man. I'm... I very much... Oh, rip that ghost. Okay, so we've actually taken the strange implement now. I've got to wait here for it. I'm very bad at cashing in on hype. I really should be better at it, given the fact that YouTube makes a lot of money off it, but what's strange is... Okay, Zajak, I'm going to follow you now. Instead of playing Diablo 1 and 2 to cash in on the hype, I'm going to play Jade Cocoon. I'm going to play Nightmare Creatures. I'm going to play MDK. That's what I'm going to play. I am very bad at cashing in on hype. Talk to Alyssa in the northeast of the dig site. Right, guys, teleport to Varrock. Run to the dig site. Here we go. Fuck hype. Give me financial advice with RuneScape in the background. Well, legally, of course, this is not financial advice. I have to say that. If you can save up enough money to buy a house, it is potentially a good investment now of course some of you are going to be saying but josh we don't earn enough money to to save up to buy a house listen millennials it's very simple all you've got to do is stop buying avocado toast stop going to get your daily starbucks which is spending 50 quid on cancel netflix gym up hit the lawyer that kind of stuff, you know? We've all seen the advice on 4. We all know what to do. Josh, you're a millennial, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, I did see they're talking about uh, 100% plus mortgages. Yeah, they mentioned that, actually. 
I had to speak to a mortgage advisor recently. I had to get a mortgage. I didn't even realise that mortgage is life debt. I mean, when you think about the fact that it's mort, that would imply where the Latin came from. Debt you have for the rest of your life. <laughs> what a fascinating idea. Um, but yeah, and they were like, so Mr. Hayes, well, what's your job? I'm like, well, I, I make YouTube videos. They're like, oh, that's an interesting hobby. What's your job? Right, I can see where this conversation is going to go to. But no, it's it's interesting to explain the, the YouTube streamer thing. Here's something that's very strange. I have reached out to my old university several times to say, hey, on the course was absolutely no information about Twitch, YouTube, live streaming, Instagram, TikTok. And as silly as it sounds, that is actually, if you want to pursue a, a career in the performing arts, it's a major thing that you need to cover. If you want to be an actor, a performer, a model, a singer, a dancer, any of these things, you very much should at least be exposed to and educated on how social media affects your job. You absolutely should. So I reached out and I said, hey, do you want me to come back and talk to the students about actual life on YouTube, life on Twitch, being self-employed, all that kind of stuff? And they responded, yeah, that sounds great. And then just never got back to me. It's very, very strange. I mean, XQC got, what, a $100 million deal from Kick, And yet, the whole industry... Uh, Cody, I'm going to follow you. Could we please search the bookcase in the southeast of the Dig Site Exam Center? None of these things are ever covered. It's ridiculous. They very, very, very much should be covered. I think that if you're going to discuss drama in, or at least performing arts within an education setting, whether it's university, college, school... You need to be educating kids on the uses, the dangers, and the applications of social media with all this kind of stuff. When you get 100 million deal, get back to us. I'm not moving apart from 101 million, you know? I'm not playing second best. Getting paid 100 times more money in one contract than most people will earn in their life. It's, yeah. And I think that the reasons that universities don't do this is because they aren't confident in what it is. I mean, my, my university lecturer, God bless them, was a lovely person, but did not have the knowledge that I wanted them to have in the, the actual performance space. It was annoying. What if I offer you a nice cup of tea? Done. Taking it. UAM Loki, I love your voice. Thank you, Loki. I grew it myself. Loki, welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're having a lovely day. How is your day going? If you're an Ultimate Iron Man, I am effectively the opposite of you. For anyone who's still unsure how this works... I am effectively trying to crowdsource a quest cape. I am not walking, I am following people. I am accepting every trade. Just give me things. I'm even going to put my twisted coat back on. I'm even cosplaying as a neckbeard. I have a neckbeard. I have a fedora. I'm actually doing the game. And I have a long coat. That's what we're playing. If Twitch dies, where will you stream? Ah, I don't know. If Twitch dies, I'll probably just travel around the country with a laptop asking people to watch me play games, you know, like we used to do in the old days. The basic stuff, just in TV, that kind of thing. So I'll go back to new grounds. It's fine. Right, who am I talking to? Oh, I'm uh, searching the, the bookcase over here. That's what I'm doing. To be fair, YouTube streaming is pretty good. Watch me read this book. <laughs> Can you imagine walking into a library, be like, all eyes on me. Everyone pay attention. God, that's going to open a Geo Cities. I will. Geo Cities, good lord. In fact, we could just read the book. <laughs> why, why is the month September? Does RuneScape have like official months? Because I've never actually read the book, but the month says September 19th. Have we just fallen into official RuneScape lore? What is... What is the RuneScape month calendar? September. Matt, you'd know this. You have got to know. All 12 months have different names. Hey, Josh, I'm defending my thesis tomorrow. Wish me luck, please. Good luck at defending your thesis. What are you defending it from? What's attacking? Do you want some advice? For the first 30 waves, just kind of chill... Use your crossbow, take out the long-range stuff. The blowpipe's good enough for it. 
Make sure you get to Italy rock early enough. You know, make sure you're switching prayers between Jad. It's a different one. Are you defending it from bandits? Matt actually did know that. Matt knew that the calendar was there. The calendar has 10 months as... Oh, okay, cool. The nomads were right. I'm not reading all this, you know. I'm I'm sorry that happened, or I'm glad for you. One of the two. Law dumps. Someone can tell me what happened. Talk to the curator in the Varrock Museum. Off to Varrock, guys. Uh, can I refer to you as Daddy? I would be offended if you didn't, to be honest. Cody, please walk me to the north. I was actually talking to a friend of mine recently about... Uh, Cody, that is the east. Wait, no, you know where you're going. Hang on. Ignore me. You're going to the right place. I was talking to a friend of mine recently. It is inevitable that I will age. I know. That's a horrible thought, but it's going to happen. I am very much wanting to age into the daddy look. That's the thing. I'm going for the Billy Butcher style of approach. I think I'm going to have to age into the salt and pepper, the black and white hair, the... I'm... I think I'm going to try and follow the school of... What's the Final Fantasy XIV quest with the, the kind of joke? The Hildebrand. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to age into the Hildebrand style thing. That's my plan. Mandeville. That was it. The Mandeville, yes. Godbert Mandeville. That's where we're going to. The George Clooney one. Godbert. That's what I'm aiming for. When I'm like, you know, 60 or 70, I'm going to do the Godbert cosplay. That's the plan. I will be a Mandeville man. That's true. Say no to tiny pants. You can't tell me what to say yes or no to. I'm going to try and age into the um, the Pierce Brosnan style of aging. You know, getting better with age, improving with age. That's my plan. But can I do the dance? The Mandeville man can. I'll learn the dance. It's okay. I'll learn the dance. I was at, and what I was talking. Um, I want to open a portal to the lair of an elder demon. Pretty much. Just kind of want that. Okay, they won't let me, so I'll pickpocket you. I'll take it from you. Steal a tiny key. Go to the first floor of the Varrock Museum. Uh, Sprite, please walk me to the stairs in the corner. What's up, gamers? Jakey, what's up with you, man? How's life? We're getting a quest cape together. Can you see how many people are in the game right now trying to get a quest cape? Darcy, I'm following you. Please walk me to the display case. Which dance? The Mandeville? I'll do them both. Let's just open this display case with the key. We've taken the we've taken the artifact, the statuette, and now we enter the Uzer ruins. Right, so teleport to Alcarid. Leeches wishes to trade with me. Tra what leeches? What are we trading? Are there any Final Fantasy that I haven't played? Necklace of Passage. Where's that from? I've got to give you a I'll give you a water skin because I need some space in my inventory. We'll trade one for another. You've got to teleport. Okay. Where's this taking me to? Rub Necklace of Passage? Uh, Wizard's Tower, the Outpost, Eagle's Eyrie. I don't know where any of those get me to. Go to Eagle. Okay. Is the Eagle's Tower correct? Should I do that? Do I go to the Eagle's Tower? Rub Necklace of Passage. Go to Eagle's Eyrie. Eagle is correct. Okay. Oh, goddamn, right. Leeches, I will follow you. I'm sorry that I doubted you. Just thought you were trying to lure me. First time I've seen you online? Well, welcome. I hope the, hope the stream is up to the standard you expect. Josh, do you have an OnlyFans I can support? I do not. You're going to have to just use your imagination. Okay? There we go. I helped you out with that. Still the highest viewed Twitch streamer for Old School RuneScape. Hey, it turns out that when you just abuse the the community and tell them to do all the work for you, people like it. People respond well to it. Imagination activated. Done. Your video on Animist was awesome. Do I also do RuneScape 3 streams? First of all, thank you for the Animist uh, appreciation. It was a fascinating video that I very much enjoyed making. I don't stream RuneScape 3 as much. I much prefer old school RuneScape. Ryu, I'm going to follow you, and now I do something with the alcove. Do I have to fight? There are no enemies in this quest, are there? You statuette with alcove. I'd rather watch this than someone hardcore grinding skills and raids. See, here's the issue. This is one of the... I'm tired. <laughs> Ryu was like, nah, man, I'm, uh, I'm drained now. One of the issues, I think, is when you play 
games to a high level of skill. It takes a huge amount of focus. It really does. And that huge amount of focus... Brady, could you please walk me to the door at the north? That huge amount of focus means that you can't focus on the chat anywhere near as much. I... I pretty much have to focus on the chat for the stream to be entertaining because I'm not a good enough high-level endgame player to, you know, to to entertain people with that kind of gameplay. Not in RuneScape. I could do it in I could do it in Neverwinter, but that was a long time ago, man. A long, long time ago. Return from here and go to the golem. This is the badass looking throne room. How nervous would you be if you were the demon and just suddenly an absolute ton of people ran through this portal and attacked you? I'd be I'd be nervous. I will follow Cody. Cody, could you please lead us to the south? What RuneScape streamers do I like? I mean, I don't know that many of them that well. I mean, everyone knows Boaty because he's the most famous one for it, but Only Trails does lots of um, treasure trail stuff. Settled, of course, doing his silly things. Idle with his snail man mode, which I think was fantastic. Talk to the clay golem. Foe, yeah, foe, again, very talented guy. But I, I don't have a lot of time to sit and watch a lot of streams, which is very annoying. I mean, Matt Kay also streams RuneScape, and again, is remarkably knowledgeable about the game, so entertaining. But you have to ask, and I've, I spoke about this before, if you stream extremely intense gameplay, you will have to you will have to lose something else and for me losing the entertainment value of the intense gameplay and you know changing you crush the mushroom but have nowhere to put it and it goes everywhere right i need pick up some black mushrooms right grind the mushrooms into a vial let me just drink the stamina potion it's fine use that on that because if I were to just play the game, focus on the gameplay, it would be boring coming from me because I would not be able to play the game to the standard or the level that would be entertaining in itself. To me, the entertainment comes from interaction with you. The gameplay, if anything, is just background. Uh, Josh, I have to ask, did you purposely criticize the race not going east to get people to comment about it? Well, the race doesn't go east. The race goes from... It goes east, but it goes from right to left. Now, people will say to me that you can spin the camera around, but it doesn't start that way. It actually starts going from right to left, which is not respecting the screen direction that the rest of the adventure was taking you on. That is a, a genuine um, moment that doesn't follow the flow of the game. Have you read the Otherlands books? Not yet. I've got them, but I haven't read them yet. Steal a feather from the Desert Phoenix north of Uza. Brady, please take me to the Desert Phoenix north of Uza. There we go. Hey, look, it's grown up Boaty. Hey, hey, Boaty is perfectly grown up. The guy's got his own grooming uh, range. I don't have that. You know, I've got a Jagex mug. That's what I've got. Hello, Josh. I wanted your take on acting. Have I ever been contacted to do voice acting? Many years ago, I did a voice acting job for a really, really boring... Uh, I think it was a, a plumbing company. And it was just... Oh, my goodness. It was so, so bloody boring. Right, use Phoenix Feather on black dye. You dip the Phoenix in the dye. All done. Use the Phoenix Quill on the Papyrus to write some stuff. All done. Right, your task is done. Right, where are we going now? Terra, I'm following you. Terra, could you please run us back to the ruins of Uzur? Is the purpose of this account only to do the quests? Yes. It's to do the quests while outsourcing the effort for the quest to everyone else. Brady, I'm following you, my friend. Nope, Terra, I'm following you. There we go. Terra, you've got the lead. Take us back. I am effectively outsourcing effort to the community. I mean, I'm not even running right now. I'm, I'm just, I'm following somebody else. I'm following Terra. What is the worst MMO so far? The one you hate. There we go. I mean, they've all got good points and bad points to them. Some of the, the terribly designed ones are at least still memorable, to be fair. But no, the, the voice acting thing that I did was very boring because it was a very 
bland company based thing. Use Golem program with Clay Golem. Use Strange Implement with Clay Golem. You insert the key and the Golem's skull hinges open. Use Golem program with Clay Golem. Oh, have you got to be quick? So, hang on. You've got to actually do this fast. Good lord. Done. I didn't realize that was the thing you had to be fast at. You, you got to be fast. We've completed the Golem. Is that the third or fourth quest we've done this stream? Lazy man mode invalidated too much effort. Do I think any new MMO could become the biggest MMO? The problem with a new MMO becoming the biggest MMO is you're taking on a huge amount of already established things. When a new... Viper Strike, good evening to you. It's good to see you, man. Hopefully you're doing well. When you release an update for a new MMO, does it become a new MMO in itself? You know, it's the, the Necrom update for Elder Scrolls Online, the the, flood, the the dragon thing for Guild Wars 2 and for World of Warcraft, does an update, does a massive expansion actually change a game enough that it becomes something different? Imagine Atari, the MMO of Theseus. That is a perfect way of putting it. Has someone much smarter than me already come up with that? But no, that's, uh, that's definitely a way of looking at it because it's definitely not the same thing. Okay, so the next quest we have is The Feud. However, it is quarter to ten here. It is bloody warm. I've been streaming for four hours, which is about my limit, because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like to think that I'm an impressive guy, but I can't last longer than four hours. And if you can, go and see your doctor, because that is, that is a thing. And you'll tell them, and they will high-five you. That's how it works. I think four hours is pretty much. If your MMO lasts longer than four hours, guys, go and see your doctor. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much to the, the celebrities we've had. And we've had Chapter Master Varak and we've had Matt K as well. What lovely people. Guys, go and enjoy your weekend. I will see you on either Saturday or Sunday for more Old School RuneScape. And the next Was It Good will hopefully be MDK out on the Saturday. Thank you very much for your time. Take care. Good night. And God bless. <laughs>